back in the day, my daughter, right? She's like showing me some pictures in Flex Magazine. Oh, I really, I, I love your photo. And I said, excuse me? I said, yeah, I love this photo. I said, look again. And she's still like, I, I don't understand. It's not me, it's Bob. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? She, 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 oh. So. She called, yeah. And then I, I had to say like, yeah. You were, you were yeah. both great looking guys. So. As long as it was a good looking picture. <laughs> you know, it was, it was. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. I have to say. Listen, guys. We never hey. did actually photo shoot as the brothers. You should have been. I know, back right? In the day. Uh, I want to welcome all you guys. I almost couldn't make it. It was almost at, I was almost at a point where I had to cancel. No oh boy. I had a severe, still dealing, my foot is up, severe gout attack. Whoa. Oh, shit. I was out literally not walking. I couldn't even get, I couldn't even move a, a foot for five days. What the hell? Man? I was pissing in the bottle, laying on the couch. It was the worst pain I've ever had in my life. And I had... Out of the blue? Huh? We, 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 we filmed Tuesday. Tuesday night, I go to bed. Everything's fine. I wake up a couple of hours uh, into the night. I got to go to the bathroom. I feel my foot a little bit. Oh, what's that? You know, but I didn't think anything of it. I was like, I took a piss, went back to sleep. Two hours later, I was in the worst pain of my life. Like, what, is that? what is that? What do they give you for that? There's nothing they give you for that. Gout is uh, it's when your uric acid goes high, supposedly when you... They used to call this the rich man's disease because <laughs> only right. back in the days the people that were able to afford meat and the seafood and the stuff, because you, you know, that's high in purine and, and, and those people are the ones... Yeah, look at Chris, because I know he's a seafood freak. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's what... Well, Dennis, and, yes. well, did you have that before? I had I had pain before, but it wasn't even close to what it was now. I was always walking, oh. and it was it was a day, and it was gone. But you were not diagnosed with gout. I, 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 how do you get diagnosed? Because you know you can only get I mean, exactly like this, he, like you are now. Here, here's here's how this happened. I went. I, I wasn't like the first time I had it where I was really had a hard time walking. The only time where I felt like I was really limping. That was when I was in Germany, like five or six years ago. And I remember I, I, I woke up in the morning, I was like, shit. And I went to the, to the doctor in Germany. And it's a, my fa a family doctor, it's a friend of the family. So I told him, I said, listen, I can't fucking walk. What is it? He said, could be gout. I said, what do you mean gout? He said, yeah, let's, let's do some blood work. Did blood work and the uric acid was high. And that tells you that, 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 that it's gout. Uh. So, anyway, uh, so now my foot is like still the size of this. Well, you're you know. off the shrimp. I, I, I didn't eat shrimp. I didn't eat seafood. I barely eat meat. You know, I, I do basically everything yeah. just to make sure that, huh? Tell us, tell us about that story that uh, you realize you're allergic to the shellfish. I'm not. But what, what, what did you say when you... When you no, that was that, that, yeah, that wasn't shellfish. That was his fruit from Thailand. It's called a fruit. A, call, a fruit called yeah. a, a, a lychee. 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 Yeah. I had lychee. I, I, mean, I remember. I never. I've seen. I've seen it laying around for 15 years in Thailand. But one time, I'm laying in bed at night, and you know, and I'm just like, you know what? Let me just snack. Let me try this shit. And it was kind of okay. And I had two or three, not more. And literally five minutes later. <clears throat> <laughs> swear, I swear to God, that was I. <clears throat> I started, <laughs> I started itching, and my my throat. It was it was crazy. So, like 30, 40 minutes later, I get up. It was dark in the room. I go to the bathroom. I turn on the light. I look in the mirror, and I didn't know who the fuck it was. I had my, first of all, my arms were out here. That's how I swole up. The whole, my, my lats were, were laying right up here. I would have helped you back in the day. Huh? Yeah, yeah, right. I would have helped you back in the day. So, so listen, so now I'm, I'm scared shitless. What's going on? I'm transforming right. here to a fucking, to a werewolf or something. So I had a, I had a friend. Thank God I had a friend staying in my house that night. So I go to the other room and I, I open the door. I said, Edward, that man, you gotta take me to the hospital. What's up, man? What's up? I turned the light on. He's like, whoa! <laughs> went, oh, to the, went to the hospital. 
And it, and it was so bad, my throat even started closing up on me. So, I, you know, and then the panic sets in, too. I'm panicking. I was like, shit. They gave me an, um, some IV Benadryl and shh. Where you going, Bob? Oh, I'm trying to get this computer. <laughs> Where you going? Remind me. <laughs> Anyways, so we're glad yeah. to have you on, Bob, because there's a few things we want to talk to you about. And there's nobody, oh, nobody better than you to clear things up the right way. I'm going to start with this, Bob. You know, everybody knows, and it was, it was going around uh, in a video that you made um, basically towards uh, Fuad, okay? Fuad, made, you know, he they did a podcast, and he basically mentioned your name. I didn't, I didn't hear nothing until I saw your video. That's the first thing I saw, and I was like, hey, what the hell's going on? So I had to watch Fuad to see what he said, you know? So tell me this. Why, why, why? Because it seemed to be like you, you were a little insulted. I was uh, very insulted. I, yeah. yeah, but I, I, I really, to, to be perfectly honest, Bob, and I know you a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand because he didn't really said anything negative about you. He didn't even, you know, he didn't trash you. He didn't. So I didn't get why, why did you take it so personal? Well, for two reasons. One, he knew exactly who I am, and, and he knows I've been the rep for many, many years. So for him to, to make it sound like he didn't know was disrespectful right off the bat. Secondly, um, I mean, listen, you cannot use somebody's name and completely disrespect them. I mean, uh, like, Chris, you just did the um, the play-by-play -play in Chicago, right? Right. So if I came out with a video yet tomorrow and I says, uh, yeah, you know, they, they had a guy doing a commentary in Chicago. Um, I mean, he wasn't really a, a comment. I mean, he was a commentator in name only, but he, he really didn't lend anything. To any, you know, he's terrible. They'll, they'll probably never use him again. Now, listen, Chris, would you take uh, uh, offense to that? Yeah, but it wasn't like that, Bob. Uh, no, no, no. That's exactly no, what it was like. Was no, it, it, it was like... And, he, and I, okay, I'm, try, I'm trying to be. That I'm, is exactly, I'm just, I'm actually just putting Chris in there. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> now, just because I didn't use Chris's name, everybody mm. knows Chris did the play, but Chris knows that I know he did the, but, but I didn't use his name, so that's okay. Uh, but Bob, oh, Bob, man. okay, listen, uh, and we are, we are not here to um, argue and make you feel bad, uh, but you were defensive, and I'm going to tell you myself. You're right. I, I don't know if you're still. Threat. I, I didn't know, know that. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that was still on. I don't. Are you? But I, I, t I, I think he is. <laughs> yeah. I talk, well, listen. I talk to, I talk to I some higher ups. Put it that way. I don't. Uh, I don't publicize it, and I don't put stuff out. I don't pat myself in the back for all the things we've done. A lot of these changes were made many years ago because there was a lot of shit that was wrong many years ago. Coming out of the Wayne era, uh, we're all obviously familiar with the old regime. Um, a lot of the changes we made were made some years ago. So it's not like a daily uh, occurrence where something's done or, you know, it's not a daily nine to five job by any stretch. But, um, yes, I was very defensive to it because I take it very personally when, when somebody's basically saying, not basically, he said, I have never done anything for the athletes. And I find that offensive. Hmm. Well, well, yeah, I really didn't take it uh, so badly. You overreacted, I think. But I can, you have, you're a passionate guy. You're doing this for free for fucking 30 years or something. <laughs> I understand uh, you're putting your neck on the line. I understand all that stuff. But really, I didn't take his words as offensive. He's just, athletes need to have a rep on hand that, you know, talk, discuss. But yeah. we know from 30 years ago, right, what we talk in uh, our circles is one thing, but you have to do it publicly. Nobody does it. You know, well, th th this is how it is. But yeah, the other athlete, athlete representative should be a good thing. I would support it, right? Now, you are 20 something years out of the bodybuilding stage, right? You are not really mingling around athletes. It's not that long. Uh, Come on now. He's not that old. <laughs> yeah, no. Now you're making me old. So now, 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 you you? now you should be insulted. <laughs> 50, 57. Yeah, shit. I'm, I'm 58. I mean, yeah, but he, yeah, when, I mean, is, when was your last show? When was your last show, Bob? My sh last show was 2006. Yeah, so yeah, masters. It's been some time, 15, yeah, 15, 16 years. But let me let me back. Let me just let me just finish one thought so we can move on with yeah. that. You guys got questions too. The other reason I took such big offense to it was you got to remember I just saw Fuad the week that that was put out. So four days before that was recorded, I saw him at the show. <laughs> shook his hand, said hello. 
hey man what's up i haven't seen him in a while the whole hey what's up man how you doing you know never said a word never mentioned anything has never brought up anything to me in all these years has never voiced a concern sent me an email asked anything sent the the uh federation an email about any nothing it's yeah, man, okay you think you're just fishing for a topic or what Oh, why, yeah. why I'm saying this, though, why I'm saying this is, I just don't think that he intentionally trying to piss you off by saying what he said. That that's what I think. I didn't think he meant bad. See, I think it's. I completely disagree. I think it was in, it totally intentional. Okay, well, okay, Bob. It, 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 that, my that, view on this one also. I'm not deciding with you or him. They, they, he saw you four or five days ago, but that was not the topic of conversation. You know, he mm. didn't want to. He didn't want to address it. They have those broad chats that talk about everything and anything. And like Chris yeah, said, yeah. So, sometimes they need to have a topic. And somebody just so oh, he, he came to him and he talked about it. And maybe he didn't want to point out that Bob Chikrilo is not doing a good job. I, I mean, seriously, I, I know that he apologized to you. But uh, when I was looking at it, I didn't think that was, oh, he's trying to say something bad about you and what you're doing or not doing. It all depends but, on the, in the context in which it's put. If somebody came out. If the topic was trainers, and he says, you know, and he's referring to you, and he's and he doesn't mention you by name, he loves, but everybody knows who he's talking about. And he's well, you know, he's he's never really been any good with the athletes. He's terrible. He's never done nothing for nobody. You know, you would take offense. Yeah, but he so didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't say that. Topic. He didn't say that, did he? Yes, he helps DJ. You listen. You well, I didn't listen to the whole podcast. I just listened to one point where he said the only thing I remember that he said was that he wished. That there was an athlete's rep that's closer to the athletes than to the yeah, federation. Yeah, you missed the first part when he said. Oh, I didn't. Okay, a, that, I'm sorry, I missed that. He said, and I, and I quote, "They have a rep in name only." Now he's saying this while he knows truly, you know, who the rep is, right? But he says they have a rep in name only, but he's never done anything for the athletes. So there was a part before that. Yes. So oh, okay. I, I'll I, send you the clip yeah. that was sent to me, and now you'll see why. No. I took such great. Okay, they, now, 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 I see what's see what's going on. I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. from that. Yeah, he did. I did put that video out in response because I'm going to defend myself. Listen, there's a list yeah. of a hundred things I've done for the athletes over all these uh, years, and, and again, it's not a paid position. That's that's cool. It never has been. That, that's fine. But I've made monumental changes for these athletes over in all these years. So yeah, I took offense. Then he did call me. He apologized, which I accepted. Mm -hmm. We had a good chat. And he says, well, you know, I said, why don't we go on the show tomorrow? Let's go on my podcast. Look, I'll go on your podcast. You got a bigger following than I do. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And, and then he bailed out in the eleventh hour. He, he didn't want to debate or or go toe to toe because I was going to make a fool out of him. Uh, uh, That's the bottom line, man. <laughs> so, which is probably why. Okay, so so again, uh, Bob, this is no uh, jump at you, but uh, as you said, you are, you are ready to debate. So let's let's debate. You mentioned sure. a, a dear friend, Peter McGuff, right? Yes. In a muscular, you mentioned him. And you said that you were going back and forth with him because he didn't agree with something. So yeah. uh, I want you to say what it is. And let's go one by one. Sure, sure. So, so sure. Peter, as everybody knows, I was very close with. and uh, But we, we would have our fun debating topics. Well, I was never in favor of scoring the posing round. I always thought it was a joke. It was never scored the way it should be. People that were the best posers never won the best posing round. And it led to a lot of problems when it came to the final placings because of that. So I wanted it out, not to be scored. Score it separately. Score it, you know, give a money prize to it. Put 25 grand on it, whatever. So okay. I thought that would keep the importance. Now, Peter always thought that it should remain in. So we used to debate about that all the time. But, 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 but you completely missed out the point. Posing round is not posing movement. The choreography. Posing round is when you can, as an athlete, show the poses other than mandatories that uh, glorify your physique, your strengths. So it's not just a mandatory. It's all oh, twisting back shots, this and this and this and that. So taking this out is essentially for years, you know, inherited here. This is a IDD bodybuilding. We have a symmetry round, which I want to touch that also, muscular round, and then posing round. I was talking to Peter McGough. We were both pissed off out of our minds. <laughs> Hold on a second. You're going to take, it's not choreography, dance, King Kamali, or Chris Cremier, shake ass fucking thing. <laughs> it, is, it is poses under the mandatory that you can show your strengths. It's very valid, and that's how they determine, 
oh, now he showed us something we haven't seen in a seven, later eight mandatories. This is, this is how it is. I completely sided with uh, Peter McGough. And so here is the punchline. You decided it's not good. Let's take it out. Did Atlas decide it? Did we agree with you? Well, I, listen, I don't know. I proposed it, and the Pro League adopted it. So they but agreed. who are you to propose in the name of athletes? I'm the athlete's representative. That's <laughs> an athlete, no athlete, no, no athlete told you that you want to change that. Milos, they don't, we don't go by a committee of voting every time there's something to be done. I, I know. That's a Bob Cicurillo, uh change rules because he thinks this, because he just said... Posing oh, is not important. It's not a, uh, Don't Ray never won the posing yeah. round. I talked to many, many athletes who don't share your view. And say, they think say that who? it's absolutely uh, a joke who? in all those years. Okay, say who? Specifically? I mean, there was... Yeah, I mean, if you have a... Potentially but but, but let me chime in for a second. Go ahead. But, Bob, don't, don't you think it would... It, it, wouldn't it be... When something like this happens, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with the, taking the, the opposing round out, because you mentioned that you, you, you want it out for what reason exactly again? It's never been scored the way it should be scored. Okay, so now, that's okay, so hold on, hold on. And, and that's why you said, you know, you, wanted, you would like for them to, to cancel the opposing round. But why not, instead of telling them to take it out, why not talk to them and try them to judge it the right way? For the same reason that female bodybuilding bit the dust. It was never uh, judged the right way. And it actually got to a point where it was so poorly done that it, mm. it actually bit the dust. But the bottom line is, 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 is you can't compare. It was a makeup round for years. There was people that should have won the round, all things considered. Some of the greatest posers in history. Lee Labrada was a, was a fantastic uh, poser. Uh, you know, uh, Sean Ray, uh, Chris, I, you were a great poser in your day. Very uh, old school, very uh, a classic. You know, you didn't do it. Not, I'm not even talking about the pop locking stuff like a Melvin Anthony or King Kamali. Good traditional great posers who were up in the round. Chris, if you would want a posing round in there, you would have actually won an Olympia. Yeah, so here's the thing some people that was winning the posing round wasn't the best posers up there. They had no, like, no. They really the, the, yeah, and, and the problem, like, like, listen, like. Like Ronnie would win the pose round. He wasn't the best pose. Everybody knows they judged the they judged the body, not the poses. Yeah, so it wasn't so, don't call it a so it wasn't so it was, so I understand what he's saying. It's not getting getting judged in a, in the right manner. There was many times. Okay, I tell you, 2003 Ironman. Jay Cutler wins. Uh, I was training Flex. Flex was second after pre judging. Marvin did a fucking crazy routine and uh, he yeah. by bypassed and played second. One of the example of million examples. So uh, I rightfully disagree with you, uh, Bob. It's not like it's not judged properly. This is physique round, like Danny says. It's not the movement. It's not like dance and stuff like that. Chris Cormier was master of putting it together, right transition, right sequence of poses, right angles, and then whoa! So you're gonna tell me that judges seeing Chris in a twisting back shot and some aesthetic, and they're not gonna be so okay. We saw him in asymmetry, we saw him in muscularity, you know, he couldn't beat Dorian in muscularity, but he sure beats him here, right. okay? And on that note, not just positive, what I was pissed off beyond belief is that you guys, probably with your suggestion as well, okay. took the symmetry round. The symmetry round? Yeah, there was symmetry yeah. round. You remember the old symmetry round, round where you come into the quarter turns only? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We but 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 yeah but 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 maybe yeah, maybe yeah. maybe Bob had nothing to do with the symmetry, right? No, I, I didn't have anything to do with the symmetry. Now let's let's clarify a few things. Number one, no round is exactly what it's supposed to be. The symmetry of your round was never all about symmetry. It was symmetry and the other things combined: muscularity, this, that, right proportion, whatever. The posing round was never the posing round. It was the posing round, but you got to have the muscularity and the, and the you know and all the and the conditioning and all that stuff. So. No round is, is an absolute. Like, nobody was ever judged just on symmetry. You could be the yeah. most symmetrical guy in the show and be dead last. I, agreed. Agreed. Right? No. So, but, by, know, by, let, me, let me finish my uh, thought, Milos. So, like, Chris was a great example, right? If you look up every Olympia Chris was ever in, if, if Chris was fifth in the Olympia, he was fifth in the posing round. If he was fourth, he was fourth. If he was sixth, he was sixth. If he was second, he was second. It never deviated because it was never really judged as such. That's why I didn't like it. Because, uh, listen, with all due respect to all, all people we're going to name, Dorian never should have won a posing round in his life. Ronnie, you know, probably not either, right? Milos, you were a great poser. You never won a posing round, ever. 
No, Why? but I want symmetry rounds. And this is the, when you're when you're mentioning, okay, symmetry, and you know very well there was symmetry, the symmetry round first. And symmetry yeah, round works like for that. aesthetics for a shape. Right. So when you're taking something that would bring yeah. aesthetic guys and shapely guys. You know, which we want to see nowadays. That's why we're battling mass monsters against more aesthetic. And now, now let's bring the classic. This is how it was from Joe Weider's time from the very beginning. For a reason, they have a symmetry. Yeah, okay, so aesthetic guys can maybe gain some momentum right there. Then muscularity, they're going to go with the freaks. Okay, and then posing round, which is not posing. It's symmetry physique round. Let's see the shape, V taper. Let's see aesthetics. The, Muscularity, mandatory poses, show us what you got. Okay, now, because they only had a seven mandatory, then let it bring the most points, because it's eight. Okay, but here comes uh, 30 poses of your choice in a posing routine that you can, you know, uh, put a stamp on, this is my strength. So, you know, my whole point here is, this was a system, beautiful system for many, many years that somebody, you, Decided to change without our approval. Well, it wasn't me. It was it was as a combination of myself, input that I get from the athletes, the the pro league. I don't make any final decisions, by the way, for the record. All I've ever, all I could ever do was put in a proposal and then see if it gets adopted by the pro league. So I think I think what Milos is trying to say is that when when you put in a proposal to change something Correct. that has that affects the athletes. Right. That he, what he's trying to say is that should be talked to all athletes before you put the proposal in to make sure everybody agrees or at well, least, I, at nobody's least. Nobody's ever going to agree on everything. So we I know, know, I know. But when there's 10 athletes and nine, uh, six say yes, oh, that yeah, means I mean, it's, it's agreed. Uh, we got a guy right here. An, again, we're using it as an example. Chris, do you think the posing round should count or it should not count? I mean, I would, I would say if it's going to be judged right. Okay, if it's well, going to be judged the criteria that. of what, if you're going to be a very good poser, if you're going to, you know, like you say, you, you, you're you doing a front double and you're doing it, you, you're, you're angling your physique in such a, such a way to where it outshines, you know, a guy who's just doing a straight up front double without no, no. Move. Well, don't be politically correct. Don't be, <laughs> just say it. I just feel like that. I feel like that. That's no, no. Like it. the, if, if it's if it's but not, I don't. I don't feel like I should lose the posing round to Ronnie. Yeah. If it's not judged right, I'm absolutely agree with them taking it out because there's no need to have a posing round if it's not judged right. And, and yeah, I don't. But I, I don't like the like this round is out. I don't uh, hold on a second. You you guys are saying that judges are not judging it right? No, 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 no. I don't, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, I understand if it's not. I'm just saying, guys. Let me say this. Here's the problem inherently is the posing around is, is almost impossible to judge correctly because what do you add in it? Does the music count? Does the kind of routine count? How do you compare a Melvin Anthony or, or uh, King Kamali to a Sean Ray or, or Milo Sarsev, right? It's, it, they're two completely different things. Does entertainment count? There's, eight, so there's basically, the basically, the, from everything. the basically, yeah, basically, the basically, the yeah. Okay, the, so, so now it's completely <laughs> it's different. Really but good all right. Entertainment count. <laughs> Some good move. Do you want to be entertained? Do you want to be entertained? Yes. Or do you want to see the last 10 years? I want to. Show me one Olympia routine that you can say, wow, I want to come and watch the routines. I can't wait for routines. <laughs> I, I would actually take the routine completely. If you're not going to judge it, don't even do it on the stage. We've seen you in the most muscular and shit like this. I mean, if you're not going to judge it, or you're not going to judge it properly, Milos, uh, Why do I'm we have the same answer I gave to the Pro League when I adopted it or when they put it in there. Put money on it. You want to see some great routines? Put $25,000 on it. Put $50,000. Guess what? You'll see all kinds of great routines because these guys are professionals and they want to make money. Right. But, no, no. Put this but this is, but Milos, 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 Milos. Milos. <laughs> I, Milos, I know, I know you. Your heart is in it, and but I don't want you. I don't want you to stress out too much. I, I love Bob. So Bob, I want you to know this. I'm not jumping in. It's just, just you say you like a debate. Yeah, sure. like yeah, yeah. That's all we do. That's all we do. And the difference I, I is, love Milos, we, we've always had a mutual respect because he can listen. This is the kind of stuff I like and I appreciate because somebody's got a counter opinion. The biggest problem yeah. with the Fuwas and some of these other people. They all got big mouths, but then they can't—they can't actually have a simple debate, a simple argument. Okay. Put the merits out there, 
discuss it, and then you move on. That's all. Listen, we're still buddies. We still all get lunch. You know, but, that's cool. Yeah, for sure. And Bob, I appreciate you very much. And I, I once, love the fact that you're you. here. So, so listen, it's not a fight. And uh, this is how people think that, oh, yeah, we have something again. No, it's just <laughs> no. let's do collectively something that is good. I think that we are all agree. Let's help the athletes. And officials, this is the same business. They want us to be happy. They want athletes to be happy. We can work together on it. It's not like, oh, we're going to say something and now we're going to fight butt heads and then we're going to be penalized. This is what some people think. I, 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 I get both sides, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because there's a difference, and that's why some shows, and it's probably up to the promoter, do most entertaining routine. Because when you do only a posing round, you do have to judge the physique. Now, when you take two physiques, one that would win the show because he has a great physique, and one that, you know, just does the poses, but doesn't, does the poses great, but doesn't have the same body, they judge the body along with the poses. And that's why there was so much, so much, too many problems with athletes not agreeing with the posing round. And instead of arguing for years and years, they probably took it out. What are you going to call that? Dancing with the stars around? I mean, no. what the hell? <laughs> no. you know, it's, it's not uh, entertainment. It's a physique show. I understand. I mean, Milos, I get, I get it. I get it. I get it. But like I said. What else you got, DJ? There's, there's all kinds yeah, of Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's move on from okay. the, from the right. posing round. Okay. <laughs> but just uh, to ask uh, all, of, all three of you guys, do you think by taking out the symmetry round, the, uh, the direction went for less aesthetic physiques and more mass monsters? Because... Well, you don't need to, you don't need to, you're not going to be judged for the shape. Well, let, me, let, me, um, let me clarify that. They didn't actually take it out. What they did was they combined it. Right. So it's not a separate round. They actually combined it in with the quarter turns and all that. So they're allegedly, they're judging and they should be judging symmetry, proportion, and shape all in that same round, which is, obviously should be done as a judge, right? Yeah, but that's, that were, that's why there were distinctive rounds. Here it is. Judge me for the shape. Right. Judge me for a shape. I'm not like, okay, let's uh, just combine all together. This, so. this is what I was saying earlier, though, Emil. Here's the problem. If you just judged it purely for symmetry, listen, a, a, uh, this pencil huh? is perfectly symmetrical, right? Yeah. Now, it's not really going to do good on a bodybuilding stage, but the symmetry is perfect. Now, there, here's the problem. If only you're, the only thing you're judging is symmetry and symmetry only. The guy literally could be in the last call out, but be the most symmetrical guy out there. But if he wins the symmetry round, he could end up in, th in fourth place. No, no. Well, so your definition of symmetry is left and right side of the, the proper. Symmetry was just words for aesthetics. This is aesthetics round. We call it symmetry. That's why I call it symmetry. But this is aesthetics and shape. Shape monster. It's not like a guy is going to play. A if he has the beautiful shape, yeah, yeah. big enough muscle on the pro stage already, you should have a certain level of development by the time you make it to the pros. Well, so that's, I just, that's what they're you know, supposed to be doing, though. Is, is, again, symmetry, shape, and proportion is all judged at the same time. That's, that's what they're supposed to be doing. Do you think, do you think somehow uh, when you did, like, the symmetry round, and then, you, you, then it's not really there, it's basically like a round, what do they call it, muscularity round? Yeah, every round is yeah. a combination round, basically. Yeah. Okay, do you think when they when there's actually not an actual symmetry round, do you think somehow uh, the physiques kind of like got a little lax in the in the? the no, they just. They they just I mean, ultimately, Chris, what they're looking for is the best physique. Now, years ago, they started with the round system and all that, which I think was great. We all kind of grew up with that system, um, but it's everything's a combo round. You can't separate anything out in particular. Listen, some of the most muscular guys in the world. Marcus Rule, Paco Batista, uh, Paul Dillette, right? Some of these guys were huge, big, Nasser El Sambadi. But none of them, other than maybe a show they won, ever won a most muscular round, the muscularity round, solely because they were missing the other elements. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. So the muscularity round becomes a combination of, well, he was the most muscular, but he's not the most symmetrical. 
So you can know, see this becomes a, a convoluted mess after a while. Yeah, yeah. But when Flex was competing, even if he was in shape or out of shape, right? Which was a yo-yo sometimes. Sure. He would be in first place in that first round. Right. He'd get a five. You know, and then then he'd fall off when it comes to the muscularity or something like that. So I was just wondering. Yeah. I mean, there was really, you know, doing it, doing it like you that. You guys say if judging is proper, I would say like judging would be proper from the very beginning. I mean, uh, uh, the Steve Underger and Jim Mannion, those are the guys that can glance for you in three seconds and, and make a judgment. I mean, so, and, uh, you know, they would put you in this. I mean, I have a old score sheets. I can tell you always, I was favored in a symmetry run and then I lose in muscularity and gain some on, on the posing. It, there was three different categories of posing. I think, uh, my point was just that, uh, uh, Bob, that you suggested the change, but you didn't have a support of the athletes. So now you say, oh yeah, well, there was a bunch of them supported. And then I asked you who, because anybody that I talked to were either, indifferent, they, they, they didn't care or against it. I'm strictly against it, as you can see. I mean, uh, for me, there was a nonsense. As, well, I, I as, an, as an athlete, as an IFB Pro League Pro registered, I'm not talking about the ones that turned pro 20 years ago or five years ago, never, never, per, ne, never got the pro cards. As an athlete, so sh shouldn't I know that Bob Chicharillo, Chicharillo is my athlete's rep? Shouldn't that be somewhere very clear and official? Yes. So, so that I so these guys a, know if they have something that they can come to you? I mean, I've said for years, and I've never understood this. I think when you turn pro, you should be sent like a whole packet, like in the mail, like a big box of clothes with that I'd say IFBB Pro uh, packet of information. How, Shit, how with, do I with all pro? with all the categories and people and easy and, 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 and the way they well, turn now, pro now, that's, that's just expensive. The problem, DJ, right? Is yeah. now you've got ten thousand. You know, they just they just had the uh, whatever show was last. USA's week. USA's. I don't even God knows how many pro cards were there. You got yeah. all these categories now, but. Um, yeah, could that be done? Obviously, to, you know, in today's day, listen, a simple email would suffice. Hey, welcome to the pro league. Here's how you enter a show. Here's where you send your stuff. Here's your athletes rep. If you got any questions, blah 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 blah. Of course they can. Sure. So if now let me let that, me let me ask you one. Let me ask you one. Thing. Let me ask you one question. You wanted this the posing round to to just to be to be canceled. Okay. okay. So now. What if we would have had, at that time, we would have had an a, a, a email list that one email would go out to every active IFB pro, and you would have said, listen, guys, I'm going to propose the, uh, for, to the Federation that the uh, posing round is going to be just canceled. Sure. Do you guys agree? And let's say 70% of the athletes would have said no. Would you would you still went on and said, I want it gone? Or would you say, okay, just leave it in no, there? The overwhelming majority didn't like it, no. But that's not what I, that's not the feedback I'd get. And I'm somewhere every week talking to pros. I talked to hundreds of pros. And I would say it was a good 60, 40, or maybe even 70, 30 the other way. That most of them didn't see any point in it mm -hmm. if it wasn't going to be judged correctly. So I said, well, if they're not going to judge it correctly, then get rid of it. But don't leave it there as a big makeup session. For who who they wanted in first, second, third, or fourth, mm -hmm. and that's to me, in my opinion, that's what it was. All those years was a big gray area of of contention. Like I say, greatest pose, you know, Lee Labrada comes out. This is probably one of the greatest routines of all time, or Bob Paris, or again, pick a guy, right? And they're in seventh place in the posing. How's that work? It's ridiculous. Is is that something that you really want to do, especially not getting paid? What's that? Be an athlete's rep. Well, no, I was kind of thrown in. I mean, here's that's a great question. Thanks for the laugh, Chris. The um, so as you guys know the story, well, I might know the story. So what happened was Sean Ray was actually the one who was voted in as the athlete's rep. He was now, voted in Sean, by who? He was voted he was in by the athletes. Yeah, I remember. I voted for him. Yeah, really. Back, in, back when we well, let me back up. I wanted to actually start an athlete's union, which I thought would have been the real smart play, and and, and to this day would have been a much beneficial. That said. There wasn't enough support for it. So what we got in return was we got a seat at the table. So Wayne, in his imitable wisdom, decided, okay, well, you guys can have a representative at least. It's so, okay. Now, I was competing at the time. Sean was retiring. So he thought it might be a better idea if he would run for it, and he did. So we got 100 and something votes, whatever he had to get. Boom, he was put in as the athlete's rep. That lasted about 10 minutes because <laughs> he had no relationship with Wayne at all. Yeah. And absolutely nothing was getting done. So he resigned. <laughs> 
So when Sean resigned, Jim came to me and says, all right, well, Sean doesn't want to do it anymore. Do you, you know, you're the one that came up with this. So do you want to uh, be the athlete's rep? And I says, yeah, well, if he ain't going to do it, he says, okay. So he posted the position up online, however he did it back then, for the position. Anybody who wanted to run for athlete truck could have done it. And I was the only one who opted to, to go for the job. <laughs> so so I was how many people how practice. many people saw that? How many people saw that, that there was position? I I have no idea. Uh, I, I, I I'll be honest, I I didn't and I was around that time, so I, I didn't. I have no idea. All I know is that's what was told to me, and I says I don't care. Listen, anybody can run who wants to run, but I'll. So, but at this point, it. it's been it's well, been how yeah. it's been what fifteen years almost. Shit, twenty, bro. Oh, 20. <laughs> so twenty years you've been doing this, and 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 as busy as you are, is this really something that you want to do? Well, it's I, I, I'm thing. talking about now at this point right now. Well, now it's 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 just kind of funny because people got short memories now, so they don't remember. You know, or or things I would bring up now that are that I how would how would about. athletes know that something that you change something on for the athletes unless they get the information? If most athletes, I, I'm I'm 100 convinced, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, 80 of the pros today don't know that you're the athletes rep. No, probably not. It'd be so so so. Wouldn't it be beneficial for for you know to inform all the athletes? Of what's going on? Would you, if there's something, if there was a change that this has happened, so at least they know what's going on. Sure, I mean that, that's not unreasonable. I wouldn't, I, and I don't have any issue with that. Now we haven't made any real changes in years, mm. so it's been somewhat of a dormant position unless really something comes around or somebody's been kind of brought to my attention that there wasn't a problem with an official. You know, there was allegations of certain things of, of, of uh, something being unfair. You know, those things do come. Most of it's mundane stuff. Like I get a. Uh, email from somebody overseas they need a visa you know a letter written you know from the federation so that they could compete here that type of thing mm -hmm. so i would type up a letter not type up but you know what i mean uh, email up a letter saying yes they're in good standing with the ifbb this and that or if somebody got suspended uh i would actually write their reinstatement letter like i did with logan franklin like i did with our good friend lee priest although he doesn't like to admit that um, logan is here he's gonna I, stop by I, to say hello I can see that about. I can see that as a value in something like that. that yeah, I, I, listen, I'm not. Of, I'm, I, I don't think Bob is not doing anything behind the scenes. I just want the athletes to know what's happening. Yeah, I, listen, I agree. I mean, so things, so things like this with the video foot won't happen again because people don't know what what he's doing. I here's what I what I see, what others see. I'm I'm, I'm gonna just tell you. I'm looking in from the outside. I know Bob. I know what's going on, but these athletes don't know. They know Bob as the voice of bodybuilding. He's the one that announces to show the Olympia, right. blah, blah, blah. They don't know he's an athlete's rep. Can you imagine if everybody knew, and I'm talking all the pros in all the categories now, that you're the athlete's rep, and if they have anything, they can come to you. How many emails do you get every day? Oh, well, listen, I mean, and here's the, let me just clarify a few things. Number one, anybody can contact the pro league office at any time. Anybody who's a pro has the email. That's how you get your pro card. That's how you, you go into competitions, right? You, you fill out the uh, uh, contract, you send it in. So everybody has access 24-7. If they got a, something to put in there, they got an idea, they've got an issue, whatever. That's number one. Number two. Shouldn't number one gonna, be you, the athlete's rep? Well, hang on. I'm just going down the – this wasn't in order of importance. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> number, number two, I'm just keeping, uh, you know – yeah, that, that would be a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> secondly, contact that, contact um, anybody who, and there are some people out there who do know I've been the rep for many years, I can count on one hand the amount of people that have emailed me or come to me with anything of any substance in 15 to 20 years. Mm. I remember, I remember. What, what, it, it what was, would there be to do nowadays? What I remember there? it was, I don't know what year it was, it was a long time ago. You tried to put a meeting together with the athletes. I think it was at the Olympia one year. And not even a handful showed up. That was for, were you talking about for the union? I don't know. Yeah. Was it for the union? It the was union, a meeting. Yeah, was, it was a meeting. It was a meeting. That was in two thousand and two or three, somewhere yeah. around there. I know nobody um, showed yeah, up. Yeah, twenty people showed up. Yeah, I went to one of them. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm gonna say this. I mean, Bob is a, yeah voice of bodybuilding, and you're a perfect choice for voice of bodybuilders. By all means, you know. So don't get me jumping and making these kind of conclusions that I think that you're a uh, wrong person for a job. I think you're perfect for a job. And uh, I can only imagine how much work, as Danny said, you can actually get if all the thousands... Well, I, I wouldn't want to do it. 
Not with yeah, all the I, categories now on all the pros. Well, yeah, this is crazy. Here's the funny part. I keep asking people, right? So the allegation was, is, you know, you know, Bob's old. He's out of date. Him and Sean need to go, blah, blah, blah. They're old school, right? All that stuff. Okay. That's cool. You are old. Here's what I, here's what I, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> here's what I can't get, though. I can't get an answer to. They keep saying they don't know what the athletes of today need and all that. So I'll ask you three. What is it that the athletes of today need that everything's so out of whack? Like, like if there's a wish list, somebody just give me one thing. That I'll tell you right away. Prize money. Pri it's embarrassing. My first pro show, 1991, I was uh, third place getting $3,000 in 1991 uh, in San Jose a Pro Invitational. Now you were saying, throwing in like, okay, let's put 25000 for the best poser. No. Let's put the twenty-five thousand as the prize money if it's already limited. Okay, Olympia Arnold Classic prize money is going up, but what we have uh, right this moment, too many competitions now, and Agreed. too many Olympia qualifiers. Right, you Agreed. know, it's basically basically a little bit watering down the whole thing, and uh, still the same prize money. So if we and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna compete. I'm not gonna make a dime. So it's not like I am fighting here for myself. But athletes in general, which sport you can go back and Google it, 1991 prize money and now 2022 prize money. Everything is multiplied, you know, several times in every sport. Why not here? Because I guess promoters are not told, listen, in order to be sanctioned and all this, you're going to have to have a, this kind of prize money. So put this as a sanctioning you know, fee. You know, it's not going to be raise it. OK, so make the money and then. That's maybe why we have a uh, very few athletes entering the contest. We were talking, Chris, Dennis, and I. Why now, with the ten times more professionals, seven guys showed up at the, at the stage? Back then, I know that Chris, myself, Vince Taylor. Uh, oh, there is opportunity to make money. So you know, I'm going to enter. Why would I just? Say, oh, I'm not going to make money if I possibly could. So, for athletes, that I would like to say, the number one thing: increase the prize money. And uh, something should be done about it. I don't know how, but there is the will, there is the way. But uh, uh, another, the second point I was going to ask you, Bob, initially, but we, we digress. Yeah, uh, ahead, I said, the, uh, you mentioned this, and it's very, very good. Because you said in the Nationals USA, uh, there's all these classes, and that's why you suggested 212, which is great. I love it. Okay? Because more people would be in these categories and not heavyweight, super heavyweight. Beautiful. Okay, we have a, a 212 for so many years. Mm -hmm. Now, we ha and I asked this uh, uh, Steve Weinberger yesterday here in the, in the gym, and he kind of agreed with me. I said, Steve, what is the definition of a Mr. Olympia? Best bodybuilder in the world. Best bodybuilder in the world. Is 212 a bodybuilder? Yes, it is. Back in the day, there was uh, six times in the history of Olympia uh, that uh, lightweight, heavyweight uh, champ for competing, four out of six times lightweight won. Okay? So why was that never considered that, hey, they're being judged by bodybuilding rules, 212, okay? So why, what? None of us bodybuilders, enthusiasts, fans, would like to see maybe back in the day Phil Heath and Flex Lewis. None of us would be interested to see it. You I mean, are you are you are you, are you asking it. why they're not doing like an overall at the end? Yeah, I mean, so that's the again. I'm speaking as the athlete, as the fan. Yeah, sure. Okay, does this make sense or doesn't make sense? That if two twelve is a bodybuilder, and you're gonna call Mr. Olympia best bodybuilder in the world, uh, why two twelve champ was not given a chance? Well, um, I can give you a few answers to that. One. Uh, our pro structure doesn't match the amateurs, meaning, yeah, that would have been very viable if we had, if, if everything matched from the amateurs where you've got different weight categories and you get to the pros, there would be different weight categories. So we don't have that. Now, as we all know, because we're all old, they had height categories years and years ago, the old Franco and Arnold days. And then they went to a weight category, had like a lightweight and a heavyweight. Uh, and then that disappeared for, for many years. Now, one difference is, is, the difference between weight between the lightweight guy or smaller guy, whatever you want to call him, or the shorter guy and the heavy guy wasn't that much. Now, over the years, that, that expanded greatly. Where now you've got a 
50, 60, 70, 80 pound difference between those guys. Oh, we got special guests in there. Yeah. And um, that is so the, the disparity of weight is way too much. Much like the UFC middleweight doesn't fight the super heavyweight for an overall UFC title, it's a whole separate division. It's not a weight category. Um, just to give you that answer, Milos, it's not considered. Yeah, but, uh, hold on. You're confusing boxing and uh, UFC. Hold on, I'm using it as a I'm Why? It's, uh, it's uh, USA Nationals World Championships always categories, okay? Winners go right. to for overall. It's a different animal. There's different well, the sport. idea, in the, I can tell you this, in the old days, uh, when they abolished all the, the height classes and all that, the idea was that if you're a pro, you're a pro. <clears throat> so whether you're a buck 60 on stage or 260, yeah. you should be judged in the same manner, the same way, by the same criteria. Now, that's hard to do. We've all been the... A, thousands of shows between the three of us and listen sometimes the middleweight guy comes out right and you go man this guy looks pretty good man let me tell you he's going to be tough in the overall right and then when the overall comes he comes out and you go eh, eh not so much <laughs> i thought he was good now he's getting dwarfed and, and your eyes go right to the right side of the stage where the heavyweight light heavy heavy and super heavyweight are standing and all of a sudden the middleweight ain't looking like he's a world beater anymore yeah but so, at least he had a chance and uh, sean clarita had a chance and he won uh Show and, uh, I was just about to ask Bob, as an athlete's rep, what do you think? Should uh, should, well, a two, should a two twelve competitor who competes in the Open and, and wins an Open Pro Show, right, qualifies for the Open Olympia, should right. he should he be able to compete in both shows? No, no, I don't like the idea of crossovers in the pros. Why not? Uh, Why well, not? One because the judging uh, makes it difficult. I mean, already we're sitting here complaining about. The, the judges judging the way they should or, or the way the criteria what, what, what do you mean that it's difficult for the judges? What, what if he would go in the open only and not do the 212? It's the same guy. Well, it is, but here's the problem. I mean, it, actually, we did allow crossovers. If I can go back just a few years, this is back in... I don't understand, but Bob, I don't understand. Yeah, 2010, maybe, we had... We allowed... Remember the first year we put in, it was the 210, if you remember. 202. When I put it, when, yeah, when I actually put it in, it was actually put in as the 210 division. Okay. Then we went to 202, and then it went that back to uh, 212 finally. But the uh, two guys that won that were first and second were uh, Kevin English and David Henry. Mm -hmm. They were allowed at the Olympia to compete in the Open Olympia as well the next day, where they promptly and respectfully took last and dead last. And, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter what well, it plays. Yeah. They had a chance. I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm just well, asking. This, I'm, this is the reason why, again, it didn't look very good that your the greatest 212 champion, the 210, whatever it was at the time, was right. dead last in the open. But listen, if if I can compete in an in a Olympia qualifier and win, then don't let yeah. me compete in the open. If yeah, I can't do the I'm Olympia... We just don't allow crossovers in the pros. But okay, uh, Bob, you say we don't allow. Right. Did you ask the athletes to vote for that? To, as the athletes representative, have a voice of athletes and say, "Well, why won't you allow it? We, we want it." Well, I, I could, first of all, that's I mean, the position I of an athlete's rep. We could do a poll of all the athletes. Here's the problem: unless you want to be at a show until 4 a.m., I would highly suggest that we don't allow crossovers in the pros because they're already. These shows are already just, just a, a you know monster it's, show sometimes. I mean, listen, Tampa's coming up this week. Tim yeah. Gardner will probably have, God knows, 250 pros. Imagine if half of them, just half, crossed over into another category. I'm not. Like I'm not talking. I'm really go until four a.m. Yeah, but I'm not talking about qualify and, and pro qual and Olympia qualifiers. I'm not so talking about you know going to the Tampa Pro and do two categories. That's not what I'm talking about. You're just talking just at the Olympia? I'm talking, no, no, no. What I'm saying is the 212 Mr. Olympia, right. uh, or second place last year, Sean Clarita, okay. a couple of weeks later, did the open show. Yeah, I was there. I called him. Yeah, and won that show. So he's qualified for the Olympia. Yes, he is. Yeah. But why can't he do the Olympia? He can. But he, he can't. He can't but, but then he can't do the 212. Because you can't do, you can't cross over. That's the rule. <laughs> but yeah, but it's. <laughs> but who who wrote that rule? Yeah, I got what you said. <laughs> I, 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 I get what he's saying now. He said it's a rule. I I I never seen the rule book, so I, yes, I'm gonna have you, to. Yes, you absolutely cannot cross over into two categories. So if Betty Sue won the bikini, if Ashley Coltwasser 
one, who's won a thousand bikini shows in the Olympia three times, right? Mm -hmm. Decided that she, she went to a wellness show. So you can e you, you can, can just do, choose way, which wins. one to do, but you can't do both. You can't do both. Mm -hmm. You can pick one. Now Sean Clarita has the option of going in the open because he qualified for it fair, or he can go and try to get his title back in the two twelve. That's up to him. Totally. So his call. so let's 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 say for instance, all the athletes would come together and say, Bob, please try to change that rule. I would absolutely submit it. Mm. No question about it. Listen, mm. I'm here to serve, you know, like yeah. the, uh, No, no, you know, no, that, that, that's why I'm saying this. I said, sure. you know, I mean, if nothing is coming from the athletes, there's not much now, to do, do. Do I think it would get passed? No. No, I can kind of head it off a lot of these things, and I have gotten some really out there type of ideas. Um, I got one that wasn't too crazy the other day from a guy who I'm going to uh, respond to privately, but um, his idea, and this literally just came in three days ago, he wants to know why why don't we don't get rid of the weight category in classic, <laughs> right? Now he asked and answered all his own questions in the same email. In effect, saying, "Well, I do realize that the weights will go up and, and this and that, you know, and the bodies might start looking like the open guys." It's like the whole idea of them putting a height and a weight cap was so that they wanted a different look. Now I can see adjusting the weight. You know, maybe that needs to go up five pounds. I don't know. You know, couldn't, if, if couldn't, over time. Couldn't, couldn't you just still jug the more classic look? Even no matter how much you weigh, that that's that's what you come out with. That's how you, right? That's, that's your interpretation of a classic look. And then it'll be up to the judging to be like, no, you're gonna be third because you're too big. See, here's and that's a, a Chris. That's yeah. a great point and and one that's a good topic because my question still is the obvious. What is classic? Now is classic a throwback to the old days? Like we want to see Arnold esque type, you know, Zane type physiques or is it in the manner that you pose and present your physique um does that you know does doing this make you classic or is it just sometimes we see bodybuilders who just look like bodybuilders in class they don't look anything classic like nothing I like the more naturally muscled look not something extra enhanced to look right. extra you know they have those they, they're, they're called like natural shows. To their bodies you want to you want to see a classic not so I'm like not naturally not taking anything i'm talking about the extra shit that we all yeah, know. Yeah, I got you. Sure. Less, no, that shit shouldn't even be in, in the... In that's the, why they put the... To answer that guy's question, that's like why they this. have a height and a weight cap, is to stop the guys from being... You but know, Nick Walker is not going to be a classic guy every, anytime soon. Yeah, I want to I wanna, I wanna show you what classic <laughs> is. Shoot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I want to show you what classic is. Poser now. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Hey, what's up? What's, what's up? up? Got a guest poser? <laughs> Here, give, me a, give me a classic. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's classic. Yeah. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 shit. Here we yeah. go. <clears throat> All right, Chris, take off your shirt. Show them what you got, brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, take it off from the back, though. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is Logan doing the temper? Yeah, we didn't tell anybody. He just uh, we jumped in the water and he's. Uh, so are you be are you going to be in Tampa too? No, no, no. He's uh, he's not. Uh, uh, he's just guest posting at uh, Little Brother show. Oh. But this is a twenty weeks out condition, you know. But as you do uh, did mention about height and weight, I talked this to Jim Manion first. He told me to uh, call Tyler, and Tyler talked to me, and yesterday I talked to Steve. That height and weight ratio already is so goddamn tight that many classic uh, guys cannot right. make it, and then they have to suffer just to make it. And then but you I, can't I, even carve think, up. Then you can't I, even carve up. Then no, it's all yeah, it's just a, up in one day. Okay, because of the weight limit, they're losing that perfect look they had it. But not just that. Next five years, they still, I mean, they're going to have to be stuck there. They cannot improve. So I just mentioned something like you said there, Bob. They should be maybe advancing every so many years. Sure. You should reevaluate re and, you know, uh, increase the, this uh, category. I mean, uh, it it has to be more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, and like I said, Mila, I don't know what formula they use to actually come up with this thing. So maybe it's too low. I mean, it could be. Uh, now, it's too low. They, 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 don't, they, they have, they like, have already Breon, increased Breon, it, though. Breon turned, Breon turned pro at 176 years ago. Right. His cutoff at his height is 180. How yeah. in the hell? Can you expect for him to get better and better? And when you still got to suck down and lose muscle, obviously. Well, wait a minute. Before we move on with the subject, Milos, I got to ask you this, okay? Sure. So you were able to pick up the phone and talk to Jim Mannion 
and Tyler, and you were actually able to give an idea to somebody? This this is crazy to me. Absolutely, positively. I mean, uh, actually, I text. How about that, you guys? Show me. Show us. <laughs> I texted, and listen, uh, Jim, Jim Mannion was on his vacation, and he texted me, like, hey, I'm on vacation. I'll have uh, Tyler call you. And <laughs> next thing you know, Tyler calls me, right? He say, oh. In, in the middle of my Barcelona game, that I well, okay, this is Tyler, so let me answer it. But but listen, he was open to it, and this is just this kind of discussion. You, as the athlete representative, should maybe you know talk to the athletes and talk to the officials. I think, and I think that we all think that sure. uh, it's, it's all right. should, it, it, it should be increased. No, but this is. I want this as a. Uh, I'm obviously half joking, but I want this to me yours to be the the quintessential example to all you guys watching this out there you see how he did that he actually had an idea and a thought and he got a yeah. hold of somebody at the office and he talked to Ty he was able to do that without my intervention that's crazy see i i, I didn't know that you were actually strapped so that's why i didn't call you oh, <laughs> or you'd been i think i i think <laughs> athletes reps should be a paid position i think you should yeah. be you should we i think okay, i think stronger. i think you should get paid <laughs> for being the athletes rep and i think that you know, it, there should be a way for you to maybe not all pros at the same time, but maybe by the ca by categories to have some kind of meetings. I don't know if it's over Zoom or with, with whoever wants to chime in just to do, I don't know, like an annual meeting with athletes to get some concerns from different athletes. Because, you know, most people don't want to say nothing anyways. All right, how much is this position worth? How much am I getting? I, I, I think it's, I, I, listen, I think if it's done the right way, I think this is a fucking, <laughs> this is a hard job. Yeah, this is not easy. How, how much can I get here? I don't Back know. I don't know. I don't know how much you can uh, get, but I'll tell you, it should be at least 100000 a year. So let me yeah. see here. Hang on. This, this, this is a great <laughs> idea. So he's coming, now he's coming back with how much we owe him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hundred grand, hey. um, 20 years. I got 200 grand I got coming in arrears. Oh, yeah. yeah. DJ, thanks for having me on. This is right, awesome. Right, okay. <laughs> I have another question. It's, it's important. Uh, actually, I have many, many questions. But uh, let's speak first with the, yeah, with the classic. Yeah, yeah, me you, you said categories UFC. The Charles Oliveira, champion, lightweight champion, missed the weight for a half pound, 200 grams, and he lost the title. Right. Now, we had a situation in Brazil that you know, this uh, guy, Horse MD, right? was going to try to uh, make it, it, didn't make it, and it was that controversy, I, I, and I, I don't want to talk about it because I don't know much. I was at the uh, Asian Games 2006 when I already knew, and Dennis knows very well, the, the everything was set up, sold, basically fixed. Yeah, we remember we, that. We were, going, we were going for the weigh-ins, and uh, they would not allow coaches or anybody else, media, to see when somebody step on the scale where it's at. <laughs> In a classic division, right? You, you have to have not just weight, but uh, because if they set height and weight, then this is the rule, right? And I don't know how that goes. The one inch, you, know, you get the 10 more pounds and stuff like that, right? Right. But, but like that. Yeah. there were the instances that the <laughs> grown man grows within a year. Yeah. They should be, <laughs> they should be heighted once, and that should be the end of it. Correct. Yeah. That would be something. Line, that yeah. would be that would be something that I, if I was still active, as a classic physique guy, I would go to Bob and say, Bob, listen, everywhere I go, they're messing me different. Why don't we yeah, don't agree to one height? Measure me where, and and that that's where it's at. So I don't have to yeah. <laughs> stress you out know, thinking that they might not weigh me and height right, me right, in right. tall enough, and oh, I'm yeah. not making weight. I, I'm uh, two inches taller than I thought, so I yeah. have more pounds. Bob, oh, how about price. that? How about would that yeah. be something? Yeah. DJ, let me ask you this. So if we went with the hypothetical, um, the open bodybuilding guy go, goes against the 212 guy for an overall, do we throw the classic guy in there too? Um, no, see, I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not for that. I'm not for that. So when you ask me the question, well, I don't think, sport. listen, I don't think we should do that, 212 and an open as an overall, because then you take away the shine. And I don't think that's, that's you know, it, it, it yeah, wouldn't... It, because you still won, but you still lost. Somebody's right. still going home as a loser. That's true, yeah. You know, and, and I don't think that's... Okay, so how, how can you then justify I'm the best bodybuilder in the world? I am. Why? Because the, uh, this guy was not given the opportunity. Category-wise. Because that's a subcategory. 
It's not self category. Four out of six fans, lightweight Olympians. How many? Hey, listen, Milos. How many <laughs> Mr. Olympians do we have? Eighteen. No, no, I'm not talking about. I mean, uh, I know his, uh, well, you know. What you consider mass physique, your classic physique? I consider that? there's only one Mr. Olympia. That's correct. Yeah, and that's correct. And so many people would say it. I heard this from uh, from many, and uh, uh, when they would say this in front of Flex Lewis, right? You're not Mr. Olympia because you're too fan of uh, Olympia. So you, you, you can't call yourself uh, Olympia champion. Well, he won his class. He was not given a chance to be uh, compared. Well, then he should go and, uh, and open what? And he should go in the open. open. <laughs> if you want to well, be, he, if you want to be Mr. Olympia, Olympia, you have to go into the open and win that show. Listen, let me tell you what the difference is, guys. There's only one Mr. Title, okay? The guy who's Mr. Olympia. And let me tell you, and DJ, you know this because we do the, the press conference and we've done it for years. How many times do I call these guys out? If there's a pet peeve I got, it's every time I go on the internet and I see it says somebody's three times Mr. Olympia, right? So, no, 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 no. Listen. You were the board shorts, Mr. Olympia. You were a classic. You were the 212, Mr. Olympia. Listen, that's cool. I don't even care if you use the Mr. title in there. Technically, you're not. You're actually the 212 Olympia champion, but that's that's fine, right? Yeah. There's yeah. only one Mr. Olympia. That's it. Okay. Bob, you said the perfect word, board shorts. Board shorts. So, so let's talk about this category. I mean... Uh, I did not come up with this category. No, really? Okay. So how on earth this is... I did not have factual relations with... I got no, but, with but I, I want to know because I know opinion. First, I respect the, you know, these guys are great. But why would they allow to wear the shorts and cover the legs? And why there is a sport that we're going to just judge upper body? Well, and then... There's yeah. a reason for that. Um, well, the, the again, first, I didn't put it in there. Secondly... Um, the idea initially was, was more of a beach body type thing, um, where it was supposed to be, you know, again, it's, it's the, the board shorts, you know, it's the beachy look, you know, beach bod kind of thing. Now it has evolved over the years. If you notice the shorts have gotten progressively smaller and tighter, uh, to the legs. Now they're not the big blousey, uh, board shorts anymore. So it has actually evolved a little bit, but, um, yeah, I agree. I mean, you're not judging the entire body here. Ten, ten, hey, 10 more years and they're wearing G strings. What's that, uh, DJ? Ten more years and they're wearing G-strings. Ah. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, remember they took out the, uh, they didn't let you wear G-strings in a bikini. Now they let you wear yeah, G-strings. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Like they, the they got smaller every every year. I think it's wonderful to have a beach body. Yeah, that's by all means, but legs included. So shorts, you said it's evolving. It should evolve all the way to the classic physique shorts in the first year. Hey, so well, it could be it could be worse. We could be doing the Raphael uh, jeans division. You ever seen the pictures of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen a I've seen Chinese uh, a glute competition for men <laughs> oh, with a G string. I don't know if you've seen it in a no, tank top. Oh God. Hey, but didn't yeah. didn't didn't but, they do that? Really, didn't okay, didn't so. they do that? Milos, you're taking over everything. I, I'm trying to. <laughs> I already lost the the question that I had earlier because you you, you chimed in. Didn't they do the jeans division somewhere in in the Middle East? Yeah, Not for us. Uh, I, I'm almost didn't ba I, didn't Bada had them on stage at one point? No, not any show I've been to, and I've been to them all. I could swear I saw if, they if went. It was DJ. It, it was years ago under Raphael because we've never had it. No, no, but, but Bada wasn't there when Raphael. He had he didn't do shows when Raphael was still. I on have there. never been there where they had jeans on. Yeah. Thank God. I never. think it was in the beginning. I think I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but I I saw it. They had a, a division with jeans on. Hey, if you're up there with jeans, do you get judged on the actual jeans or just the physique? And like, does it matter if you got like uh, designer jeans? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I was laughing. Yeah, I, I was like, but on a serious note, no, designer jeans, man's physique. Why they have only two poses? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? And then they're gonna say, and they're gonna do ten times the same thing, ten times the same thing. I mean, it's annoying as fuck. I mean, I'm sorry. I just don't, I just don't like the round. I don't like the the thing. This yeah, thing. who do, who does? Well, uh, let them, let them have ready. a little chance to present his eat. Who who came up? More, who, hey, hey, can you get more points? If you tell me this points? though. Tell me this though. Who came up with the with the posing for the man? Who decided that who, this is what we want to see? Yeah, I don't know who came up with it? But I, what I can tell you is, I remember talking to Jim before we put it in, and we were actually going back and forth on whether we should have poses in there. Because my question was exactly what yours is. I was like, well, what are they going to do? 
said, well, we're going to do a front and a back pose. Well, and Jim didn't know if that was enough. He's like, well, maybe should they do like a couple of poses or something? Or, I mean, maybe we just put a few in there and, right and we opted it. not to do it, you know, the, uh, at the end of the day. But as you guys see, uh, you know, technically there is no routine in men's physique or bikini. Yeah, of course. So why they allowed? Tools, there's no routine round. There is no, it's just a front and a back pose. Now, obviously they've evolved into what you see today. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I, mean, I think they maybe should do something. They, they should, uh, for a men's physique, they should have a shorts. Legs should be judged maybe differently. You don't have to have a super muscular legs, but everything has to flow. And they should give them a couple of poses. So instead of 30 seconds of doing the same thing, right? You know, do a few poses. You know, yeah. Milos, what, what, what's that? <laughs> Here's how you start. Chris, you know. Chris has got it. It, hey, yeah, but yeah. when they when they turn to the side, I see them doing one biceps now. They're coming up with one bicep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in there, yeah. All right. But you know how it is? It is like, oh, I'm gonna do a dramatic poster, and then I'm open. Bob, do you do you Bob, do you have do you have now anything? I mean, what the hell? <laughs> Bob, do you have anything on paper at the moment that you want to bring up for changes in the future? Anything that's going through your mind? I tell you one thing, uh, to Milos's point earlier, and all our points really, because the main thing that comes up all the time, of course, is prize money. Now, there's a few problems with this. Number one, we are in a very unique sport, if we can call it that. You know, everybody's got their own little definition of what bodybuilding is. It's kind of a combo. But, you know, football puts on football games. Baseball, Major League Baseball puts on baseball games. Hockey puts on hockey games, and so on and so on. Who puts on bodybuilding shows? Promoters. Yeah, the I IFBB know. Has never that's why. That's why you didn't hear me say nothing. This is this is why it's a little different for people, right? Because they go. I, I, know, I was like, I want to promote shows. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we're all promoters, right? So, bottom line is, is, we all get it, but it's a very unique sport in that we, the federation, is a sanctioning body, and I've been trying to explain this to people for years. All right, when you say they need to do something or they need to increase, well, there is no they in effect. They sanction the shows. Now, the promoter can put up a million dollars if he wants. Right, right. Now, as we're all promoters, we all know well, that ain't happening because, you know, even though people like to label us as the greedy promoters, we can all tell you firsthand, sometimes there ain't a whole lot of money coming back, if any. So it's a, it's a, um, it's an interesting premise of how can we get more money. So to answer your question, DJ, um, I've actually been, been pattering around an idea of, okay, how can we get more money in the athletes' pockets, be it, uh, prize money or otherwise. And then one answer I came up with is we, I think we need to explore the pay-per-view more where maybe the participating athletes get a piece of the pie, or maybe they have a idea. Everybody's got social media now, right? Everybody's got a following. Hey, I got a million followers. I got 2 million followers. Great. Get every one of them to give you a dollar and, and we'll all be in good shape. Right? So maybe there's something, again, I've been playing around with some ideas with this and having some conversations. If pay-per-view can get put in, let's just say across the board in, in pro shows. Now, let's just deal with the men's open for now so we don't have to get convoluted, right? The participating members would all get put in. Let's just say it's like a, you know, like a coupon code works for, for um, you know, supplements sales and stuff, right? Okay, Chris, you're, you're going in the Tampa Pro. We're going to give you this code, Chris90, okay? If you buy a, if buy a pay-per-view ticket under Chris90, you're going to get a portion. Let's just say it's a dollar a pay-per-view, Chris. So you got 1 million followers, great. Get 1% to buy, right? Boom, there's 10 grand in your pocket. So I'm thinking there's some system of that nature, but we've got to take advantage of, you can only get so many seats, and we all know as promoters, I have yet to see a sold-out show anywhere, okay? Selling tickets for pros is very difficult for a lot of different reasons. Pay-per-view is the future. That's where the money is, and I think that's something I'd like to explore, and I, I would like, now it's not really a, um, uh, that's not really a federation thing, DJ. Like that's something I'm just doing on my own to benefit the athletes or to come up with an idea because it's not like something I need approval for. Mm -hmm. You know, if I put together a deal with Tim Gardner and say, "Hey, can the athletes get a portion?" She says, "Yeah, absolutely." You know, every athlete you sell X amount of pay per views, you get X amount of dollars. Um, so it's an idea. That's a great. Right. Idea. Hey, by the way, all three of you are promoters. I'm the only one that is not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so whoever is there wants to make. Well, the Chris yeah. Mary Classic, I'm trying to do a lot of extra stuff, you know, just to give back to the. I have, yeah, I athlete. think, I, I have one idea that that I heard, and I was I was actually a little, little shocked that this is the case. That I think that's something that 
probably should change because as a pro, I mean, I like the fact that they added masters in, in some pro categories. It's nice to have these guys that, that um, turn pro at master events you know, get a chance to compete as a pro. What I don't like about the situation is that these guys have to pay entry fee. Yeah, I don't like a fan of that either. They have to pay entry fee to compete uh-huh. in a pro show. You know, and I'm talking three hundred, four hundred dollars. As oh, a pro, yeah, as a, as a pro, now you got to buy your pro card and you got to pay to compete, and that's no prize money. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of it, DJ. I never have been. I've also never big, big been a, ever been a big fan of the Masters Pro card. Now again, we're all old school. We, we all get how hard it was. Some of us more than others. Right. To get that pro card. Um, oh, yeah, well, speaking uh, of that. Speaking of that, don't change the subject. Don't change the subject. Please don't change the subject, Milos. Hold your hold your thought. Write it down and, and bring it afterwards. No, because this is perfect moment. It down. Trust me, trust me. Perfect moment. Go ahead. Who is, write it down. <laughs> who tried the hardest to get the pro card? Bob Chikorilla. for fifteen years, right? Thirteen. Why do you got to keep making more? You make me old. Thirteen. From eighty-seven to two thousand, right? That's right, sir. Okay, so, you know, I, I, I mean, I take my hat off to you. I, I remember this. I mean, this guy is never giving up. And yeah. then finally, 2001. I mean, this is something I want to give you credit for. What's I mean, two, I, I Bob, was so impressed. Bob, was 2000 the last hurrah? Said so this is my oh. last hurrah. Was that your last try? Would have, that, would have been your last try. Um, the second and other champions. No, I, no, no. He's saying if I didn't win that one, would I have kept going? Um, yeah. No, I would have. At that point, I mean, obviously, I was going to either win or take second, you know, whatever. But I pretty much knew that was going to be my my time. So, you know, at that point. Okay. But no, I would have I would have gone to the nationals if I had to. But that was not, you know, I, I had enough, bro. Like that was it. That was yeah. my Olympia, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I had go. Guys so like Chris in front of me the whole time. Can I come yeah. So going could, back, going back to the Masters. You beat me one time in the '91. I did. It was my claim to fame. <laughs> so, so going back to the Masters, is that something that you're going to propose to, for the Masters not to pay? You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. Uh, well, it's, it's hard to put the genie back in the bottle on this one. I mean, that's kind of something the Federation started, and I'm not a big fan of it, but here's the problem. If the Masters competitors are willing to pay it... Well, it, it, I, don't right? think, I don't think it has anything to do with, with being willing. I mean, if you have to pay to compete, if you want well, you to get on to stage... Compete, right? Well, I mean, you could sit there and go, no, here's, here's the problem we got today, DJ, and it's, and it's a bigger business issue than even just that. Most people who get their pro cards never compete as a pro. Now, think about the numbers, boys, right? Because we're talking just pure mathematics here, right? We turn hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people pro every year, correct? Yeah. Hundreds. I, it's probably close to 1,000, right, with all the, all the shows. So where are all these people? That's the question, right? Because none of us see yeah, shows. think they bucket list in the – they I think it's a exactly right. card and then they, they retire. Well, you're right on it, Chris. Here's, here's the problem, all right? The main goal used to be, when I was trying to get my card all those years, and you, Chris, and Milos, and, and, and Dennis, right, and all this, the idea, it was never a question whether you were going to actually compete as a pro. That was the whole point, right? Was right. to get the damn card and get on the pro stage and hopefully you get to the Olympia, right? That's that, was, that was it for us, right? <laughs> Today, that's not the case anymore. The, the golden ticket these days is calling yourself an IFBB pro. Now, so make more money in your, your 90% of these people, training. maybe 95%, turn pro, win second place at the junior national, whatever, right? And all that stuff. And they're going to use this title to go be a coach, prep coach, a guru, a life coach, whatever they do, right? That's but true. they never step on stage. This is a problem. You shouldn't even and be able to put, don't see- you shouldn't even be able to put IFB Pro in front of your name unless you step on a pro stage. I, I couldn't agree more, but you can see that the, 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 the uh, goal has changed. The goalposts have moved over the years where <laughs> competing as a pro is gonna, not even a thought to these people. Yeah. Just get the pro card. And how do we know this? Well, I can tell you how. 
We've all been to millions of shows, right? Did you ever see a class of 72 people come out? No, <laughs> right? You, holy shit, we got 72 men's physique guys. No, it's always 30-something, right? Maybe you get 40 at one show. Maybe that's huge, right? right. The numbers don't dictate, dictate that we should have 70, 80, 90 people in a, in a division competing somewhere. There's thousands of pro cards have come down the pike in the last five years. Thousands. Yeah. Where are they? It, it shows at the Olympia, though. You know, you saw, it you remember right that, you remember last year, I mean, Friday prejudging went yeah. into like what late in the middle of the night. So what's going to happen yeah. this year? Because I think the way it looks right now is there going to be more athletes on stage this year. I tell you, I propose this. Now, it's not really a, again, a federation thing per se. It's more of an Olympia thing, but I have proposed and I really wish they would adopt this. I have a system. First of all, I get rid of the points thing. Don't like it. I don't like rewarding people for going out there 10 times in a year, yeah. putting their health at risk. I don't like it, right? Go to the bump system. You go to a show. Go to Tampa. The guy who wins it's already qualified. Go to number two. Give him the qualification, right? He's qualified. Go to number three. Now, don't go out outside of three, but, again, give these guys an opportunity to, to earn their way there if a superstar jumps in the show. They're not just done, mm -hmm. right? Qualify more people to the Olympia, but here's the caveat. Have a cut round. Right? Like we used to do in the old days. Like an, eliminate, like an elimination round. They do this in every sport you can possibly think of. right? But where, possibly, where would you have to cut round and what does that mean? Well, here's, here's the way I would do it. Again, this is a small synopsis of it. But I'd get rid of the point system. I'd go to the bump system. I would have majors and minors when it comes to shows. Okay? Just like golf. If you win a major, let's say the majors are New York, Chicago, Tampa, whatever, right? The, the L.A. champion. You know, pick 10 shows, right, that are majors. If you win a major, you get everything. You get your, your way paid. You get your flight expenses. You get your per diem. You're in the program. You get to meet the Olympians thing, right? And you get an automatic pass into round two. You get a buy, okay? If you win a minor show, let's just pick some San Antonio, this show, this show, whatever, right? Pick a bunch. You qualify for the Olympia, but you're on your own dime, okay? You pay your own way there, whatever. If yeah, you end up placing in the top, Don't you think that's yeah. going to take away from the tradition no, 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 hang on. Look, hear me out. Hear me out. Every other sport you can possibly think of as a cut round, right? Tennis, golf, uh, wrestling, again, you name it, right? Uh, the Olympics. There's eight lanes on the TV that you see. When you see Usain Bolt run, there's eight lanes. All right? Started out as 150 guys. Came down to eight people, right? You all get to the Olympia. Again, if you don't win a major, you win a minor, you still get there, but you got to go compete. Round one. All the people that got there by the minor wins, right? The smaller show wins. They all compete. Let's just say 10 of those guys are going to move on. The rest of you guys, pizza and beer, right? You take your 10, you add them to the 20 major winners or whatever whatever number that is, and you start your prejudging, round two. You're going to whittle 20 or 30 people down to 10. 10 will go on the Joe Weider final stage on, on Saturday night. That's it. Well, you don't go across, you don't do this, and wave hi to mom and do your one pose, and yeah. boom, you're gone. I mean, I, I, I get it. Pre-judging, you, you do pre-judging, and then just the top ten will go to the finals. Right. I get that. I, I, I get that. And this is because you can't have all these athletes on Saturday because right. the show but would take too long. Get them there and you, but, listen, how fast was it then for the cut us back in the day as yeah. the Nationals to 15, right? But, uh, 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 yeah, but amateurs and pros is a little different, I, I, I think, because as a pro, you have a different status. And I think, you know, because you said that Who's going to get, you know, their ways paid? Only the top well, 10? If you, here's the thing, though, right? Whatever number they pick, whether it's top 10, top 15, that, that's up to the promoter. That's up to Jake Wood. Right? So let's say, top, let's say top 15. Let's say top 15. 15. So if you make it, you get, let's just say you won the San Antonio Pro. Okay, I'm going to the Olympia. I got to pay my own way there, but that's cool, right? If you end up making the top 15, you get reimbursed. No, but, cool. but, but, I, I, but, 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 Milos, one, one second, Milos, one second. Let, 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 let me get mine out first. So, okay, so let's say, let's pick a category now. And I'm going to pick okay. Classic Physique. Because I believe okay. Classic Physique is going to have 50 guys. Okay. Okay, so now you, you, you're saying that, let's say if they do top 15, that 35 guys need to pay their own way to get to the Olympia, which was traditionally always paid for. So, and I'm not worried about somebody that's <laughs> driving from Arizona to, right, uh, right. to Vegas. There's 25 people from Europe. Well, it depends on how many majors there are, right? How many we dictate? There's no, now, ma there's no major in Europe. 
Well, you, well, we we make some then. You designate a major. I know, but how? Right, let's just say let's who, just say it was your show, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the DJ Classic in Germany is a major. It's an Olympia qualifying event. If you win your show, you get your expenses paid to the Olympia. So why yeah. wouldn't somebody who wins the show in the next country wouldn't get it paid? It's, what, what's yeah. different? What do you what do you what was that question? What, so so let's say my somebody wins the Dennis James Classic Frankfurt qualifies right. for the Olympia, which happened two years back to back. David Hoffman from Germany. Okay. But what's the difference that if somebody wins uh, the the show in in Spain with Emilio? Well, again, if is it a major or is it a minor? But who decides which one is major and who which one is minor? Well, yeah. we already have an effect because you've already got the uh, shows that are already in tiers, right? So you've got the Arnold that's tier one, this one's tier one, this is tier two, this is tier three. You've and already kind of got that system. Now. Which, which one is oh. tier, which one is, what, what's the difference between who's tier two oh, and, and tier three? New York Pro. I yeah, thought, I thought there was only tier one and tier two. No, it's like three tiers to shows, but it, it depends on how big it is, right? You get one point. If you, you know, at a tier three show, you get five points if it's a tier one show, you know, that type of thing. I know. So but, we've already kind of got that system now, but I, it would take I, nothing to... To use location, and and obviously history of the sport. Would the New York Pro be a tier one? Of course it would, right? You know, maybe a lot of the shows that have been mainstays for years. Then you go to Europe. Okay, we're going to have DJ show in Germany, this show in the UK, this show in Spain, and this, you know, so maybe five shows in, uh, over uh, seas are considered majors. Total, the, let's just say there's 20 major shows. So, like I say, those 20 people get an automatic pass into round two. They don't have to compete against the the guys that qualified on the other stuff you know what i mean now what's this do it qualifies more people gets more people to the big dance more people to the olympia more people to engage their social media and such and all that stuff listen are they not going to go because they got to pay their own way of course they're going to go they just paid their way to listen I'm, I'm, yeah, i'm i'm going to tell you that my honest opinion there's going to be a lot of athletes that already invested everything they had and more just to to get to get in shape so now they got to Pay their flights to get to America, hotels. You know how much that well, costs. They pay their flight to qualify. But but, but hold on. That's hold what on. I'm saying. So now you already. Whole, it's not. It's not. Not, not everybody as rich as you, Bob. Okay. The whole point for <laughs> athletes. Two hundred grand from the athletes rep thing we're gonna do. <laughs> hey, yeah, but but yeah, the, Bob. Here is the perfect example. Now you know. I want you to analyze yourself. Super. You as an athletes rep, you want athletes to pay their own way, for being qualified for Mr. Olympia. Why is this even topic of uh, discussion? Topic could be, it's okay, how are you going to judge them, you know, and, uh, and make these rounds? Okay, but why did you even mention, oh, let's take their money away and then they're going to be reimbursed. They qualify for Mr. Olympia. For the yeah. love of God, why would you take, why would you talk money and taking that money away from them? Well, uh, there's a few reasons. You're athletes trapped. You should fight for the athletes, I'm not against them. I'm, I'm actually fighting for more people to qualify to even get to the. These are people who need. So they qualify, pay for their flight. It's Olympia. We they don't qualify. Uh, they earn. How many people can earn the Olympic qualification? Listen, this ain't the duck pond where everybody gets a, a you know a, a prize here, Milos. I mean, you're gonna listen. You qualify, but you qualify at a, at a minor, not a major. Now, I'm not telling you, you can't go compete in the major. Go ahead. Mm. That will they'll pay. Your okay. Money. So Or, then, then I would I would I would love have Olympic qualification. I would love for. For, for us and for all to find an, a solution where maybe not as many people qualify. I think 50, it's just too much. Well, here's That, the thing, it's, DJ, right? Number one, you gotta qual we got to find a way to qualify to get more people to the big dance, but we can't have 80 people in, in men's physique, you know what I mean, or that type mm. of thing, right? It's already too long. I remember, I remember the Olympia where there was 12, 13 guys at the show. You can't, yeah. you can't grow the sport and keep, and keep the sanctity of, of the prestige of it at the same time okay mm. because here's the problem hey jake it's going to cost you four hundred thousand dollars in per diem this year mm. because 10 million people qualified it's like well why are we qualifying all these people while well, we're trying to expand the sport you see what i mean if i'm jake i gotta sit there and go whoa, whoa whoa hang on a second here i'm all for it but listen i just can't be at your disposal you guys put another 10 shows in there and i gotta pay another 10 people. This I just, I understand people. that part. I totally get that part. I just feel bad because, you know, for, it was always tradition when you qualified for the Super Bowl, but that's, you, you don't have to pay to get there. It's this big, right? Yeah. Now it's this big. And the problem is we've got, we've got what, 10 categories So now? I think they should make it much harder to qualify. Well, yeah. So you literally, literally only get the best of the best. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be, there should be the top 10, and there shouldn't be another 40 guys that didn't make it. DJ, hang on though, hang on. Here, let me play devil's advocate, right? 
I don't disagree with that inherently. Here's the problem. Okay, we're going to make it twice as hard to qualify. We just want the best of the best there, right? Here's the problem. Everybody wants more prize money, especially at the Olympia level, right? Should be a million dollars, should be this, should be that. I'm all for it. All the athletes should get paid. I'm all for that too. Here's the problem. With keeping it this big, where's the money coming from? It automatically shuts you down in terms of growth. You actually need to increase the amount of people, but yet decrease the amount of people getting to the finals. That's why I say qualify everybody and their mother, and then you have a cut round or two. They do this in tennis. They do this in golf. They do this at the Olympics. They do this in they do this in every sport on this earth except for ours. And let me so tell you, where is going to be where is going to be cut round at the at the Olympia at the weekend? Olympia. At the Olympia, yeah. So uh, you like, step on stage, like, just like the old days, man. You went to the nationals. You went out there. You did your turns. Bob, Bob, Bob. Thank you, gentlemen. Next thing you know, you had Ken Keen backstage going, okay. But Bob, think about, but Bob, think about this for a minute. This is this is not the Nationals. It's not an amateur show. This is the Olympia. No. Now, think about this for a second. I'm gonna give you just 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 this thing. Now, there's people flying in from somewhere in Europe, Australia, wherever, and they bring in family, mother, parents, everybody's flying in, and they don't even get to see their son on the Olympia stage pose. You see him, you're going to see him at the, uh, whatever the prejudging is. You know I mean? That's, that's what you, listen, the same fourth grade T-ball, man. This is the best of the best, DJ, right? I, mean, I know, sorry. but. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, they were, yeah. get better. Get yeah. better. <laughs> listen, <laughs> hey, we all had to do it. Yeah, but we hey, didn't. Yeah, wait a minute. No. Hang on, let's keep things in context. But, but also, but like. We all is, did this at the national level, right? We all had mom, dad, sister, bro come in. And in the old days, like I say, you could have been on stage for two minutes, and then it's pizza and beer. You were done. Sorry, you didn't make the top 15, kid. And that was life. Hey, man, I, you, I like, you still man, you, I like you keep you comparing the nationals with the Olympia, right? You can't compare uh, them. Say what? Yeah, say see, what, Chris? What I'm talking about DJ is there. I mean, uh, Chris is. You got a pay per view to work with these days, right? And these numbers are not great. A lot of pros travel by themselves. Well, again, a lot of the athletes do travel by themselves overseas. At these mom, dad, sister, and bro, by the time you get to the Olympia, bro, they spend enough money on your ass. They ain't coming, right? Hey, man, I'll stay home and I'll get the pay per view and all that stuff. Now, these athletes can be made, can still be making money if you were to do that pay per view. We'll call it a profit sharing. It's not really profit sharing, but you know what I'm saying. If you've got a big following, and this, listen, this goes for guys, girls, anything. I say you sell the most tickets, you get the money, right? If you're a girl, you're a Eurishna Ayala, you've got 2 million followers. All you need is a half a percent. You can be putting 20 grand in your pocket, right? Put the thing on your on your Instagram. Hey, everybody, buy the pay-per-view for $39.99. You know what I mean? A dollar goes to her. 20,000 people get it. She's got 20 grand in her pocket. Yep, I like it. I mean, this is a, it's a great system, right? Even if you don't make the fine, maybe you make more money than the guy who places 10th. I don't know. Yeah, but, but that puts now your Ishna with the two million in a major uh, advantage position over the girl that has none. So now Yarista just because she's a social media star could get the two, you know. I mean, well, I take it. Get you're talking right. business and money. So I, I just disagree with you, Bob, <laughs> that the uh, first thing you said and making a point, let them pay their own uh, flight. And uh, I, I agree with Dennis, because I know a lot of European guys that uh, make $200, $250 a month. They, 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 you don't even understand how they make it to this goddamn show. And then they qualify. Right. Oh, beautiful. No, 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 no. You're going to still have to pay. For what? For have real. a promoter. Listen, you guys are promoters. I'm not. But then I would tell you, if you understand that, you promote your show, whoever wins the Olympia, or uh, qualification for Olympia, pay for his flight if you don't want Jake Woods to pay. You, I won Bob Chikorilla Classic, whatever. Okay, right. beautiful. I've qualified for Olympia. And you don't want to expose Jake, you pay for the flight. That's your winner. Well, the promoter could do that. That's a great incentive, right? Great. I mean, honestly, it's a great idea, Milos. Maybe so. Maybe the maybe the uh, the promoter uses that as a perk and says, "Look, I will pay your way to the Olympia should you win." But it this should be a special thing. Like I say, if they want to do that, that's cool. But I don't think you're under any obligation at that. But listen, if you want your way paid, then go in a major tournament. Go in a major. No, we're not saying you can't go in it. Go in it and win it. Well, IBB made this show. You call it major or minor. No, no. The IBB, IBB Pro show. The show. Hang on. The IFBB sanctioned the show. The promoter 
is the one. If DJ putting on his DJ Classic in Germany says, hey, I tell you what, I will pay, I will give you $2,000 towards expenses if you win this show. So you can take that and you can put it towards your Olympia, uh, you know, uh, uh, presentation and all that. I mean, that, listen, that's a great perk, DJ. What do you think? Yeah, I like that too. I really do. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, and listen. But, that, it that, should, but it shouldn't just be one. It should be every single one then. Every what? Promoter. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, and I don't have any issue with that either. Now, I don't know if that's an IFBB thing or if that's a promoter thing. I mean, it's a great incentive. If you as a promoter knows anything you can do to get these people there is going to help. Yeah. You know, we all do our best to try to sell tickets. Now, it's difficult because it's hard to sell tickets for pros. Yeah. I, I just don't want, you know, the athletes to run around and, and, and talk down on the Olympia when it says, oh, all of a sudden you got to pay your own way. It just doesn't. It just, I, I think they'd be pleased think, if, just to get there because uh, without changes like that, these, a lot of these people are never going to have any shot of ever getting to the Olympia. Mm. I was giving yeah. food at my show, giving food vouchers, flight vouchers, right. and some, some Louis Vuitton cologne for the for the for the the you know person most likely to go pro and the, the male and female. Oh, but you, you're, you're just pro. talking amateurs. You're talking amateurs. You have yeah. a you have a pro. Yeah. You did a pro you event too. Still do some type of voucher. Yeah, as a promoter. So how do you guys see Olympia this year? It's going to be like thirty guys. Uh, in the open division, it's going to be like 50 guys in a classic. I don't know uh, on men's physique. I mean, really, men's physique is going. It won't. Men's physique won't be any less. So, well, so how do you do that? I mean, we're already cutting people, right? I mean, because listen, there's no way I can guarantee you. We don't have the time to present 50 people across the stage. So, exactly. I mean, I'm thinking already. I you're... totally get that. I and 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 you're absolutely right because it was terrible last year. Well, see, again, we added back in female bodybuilding. There's a whole other division that came in. Now we added uh, women's wellness, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got the wheelchair guys. You know, they were added in a couple years ago. There's a lot of stuff going on, as we all know, with the Olympia. But you can't go to it. You don't need a three-, four-day adventure on these things. Again, I think you can get our cake and eat it, too, by qualifying more people, bringing more people to the big dance. Otherwise, the Olympia will never grow. That, and that's the, that's the problem. That That's the... Uh, the give and take that we have with, okay, well, how do we grow this? But at the same time, again, do, do we want 60 girls in bikini going across the stage like, like the clowns come out of the Volkswagen? It's, I mean, listen, with all due respect, we want the best of the best. And I think we can do that by having a cut round or two. You know, maybe it takes two rounds to get there. But either way, that night show should just be the finalist. To me, top 10. That's all I want to see. I want to see the top 10 physiques in each category, boom, 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 and we're out in some reasonable time frame. Yeah. Uh, Bob, we competed in the 2003 Night of Champions. Remember, it was almost 50 people. And <laughs> you remember, that was the first time that we didn't do our individual uh, poses. We, we went two by two. I mean, because it was like 50 people, you know. So yeah. I, I see that happening now. I mean, really, I just want to uh, see from a practical you know, standpoint how they're going to do this. It's going to be 50 uh, classic physique. Are they going to? You're gonna have uh, to cut people. It's I mean, gonna be a long. It's gonna be a long prejudging. Pre I would. I would cut after prejudging, just like again. We all did it at the national level. We all did it at the USA's. No, I don't have a problem with that, Bob. I, don't get me wrong. I totally agree. Yeah, there should be an elim 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 elimination yeah. round. You know, to get you know to cut people. Yeah, I, I understand that, but at least uh, you know, make sure they don't <laughs> they don't have to pay their own way. Well, see, again, that's great. I mean, and, and listen, in a perfect world, yes, you would qualify and everything. But again, ask, ask Jake what that tab is. Yeah. I remember what it was. No, I feel, I feel for Jake. Bro, it was 160-something thousand. And that was like probably six, seven years ago. Hmm. It's probably over double now. So you're, you're, you're paying a hundred. Probably It's probably, it's probably way, way more than double. Right. And that's just in, yeah. in per diem. Rooms, uh, the rooms, yeah, right. Flights. I mean, all the, and some of these people are coming from God knows where, so yeah. you know they're not all equal. But it's at least a couple of grand per person. Oh yeah, oh. and that adds up quick. So you yeah. know, when people they're quick to jump on our on our ass, especially me as the rep, because oh, you know the athletes, you know, it's like look at look yeah. at, just change the system around, okay? Listen, some of these people would be pleased as punch just to get there. Just, hey, I'm Olympia qualified. I mean, it's like look at it's a, it's a, we're giving you a chance, right? You got a foot in the door. You're gonna get go get a chance. You're gonna get looked at. You're gonna get on stage, and if you're good enough, you'll make it to the next round. 
you know, and maybe with each round, there's there's money there, right? Yeah, okay, you make it to the first round, there's two grand. You make it to the finals, it's five grand. You Guys, know? you keep going. I'm going to be right back because I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your foot. Watch yeah. your foot. But, but, uh, a first in podcast. But, is, the host has left. The yeah, host got, but, but listen, Bob, we didn't have a chance to talk about your qualification, really. It's a rocky story that uh, we never talked about it, but I respect it so much. Because I, I remember, okay, '99, you played second, so you were you were close to okay. Now I can taste it, but 14, 15 years of trying. I mean, who has this kind of persistence? I don't think that too many people know about it. I mean, uh, no. No. you know, it's I tried, funny. At, I tried to win at Arnold like that. I was like, yeah, you did. Arnold Classics. I did ten Arnold Classics, ten Olympias, and was being second six years in a row. Man, that, I feel the pain. Yeah, I had to. I had to cut it after that. I was like, okay, for my own sanity. You know what's funny is, <laughs> it, um, obviously, the USA was this past weekend, so I put up a video uh, on my Instagram from when I won in 2000, and holy shit, the responses are insane. Just because it's well, a people they think we're old. You know, of course, we're they don't realize. Oh, I didn't know you were that good. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. But the funny thing is, is 22 years ago, and I think that physique can hold up today. I don't think it's gone forwards. I think it's gone backwards a little bit. <laughs> They're not going to like you saying that, but uh, <laughs> I say it the same way. It is what Listen, it is, man, you know? Yeah, but uh, uh, 2002, Night of the Champions, I remember, you know, placing second and, you know, catapulting it there. You actually, when you came to Colosseum Gym, I don't know if you remember that. Of course, you're joking, but you said, bring on Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> Clearly, I was joking. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. But yeah, bring him on. You know what sucks about Ronnie? Because he would go in numerical order, I was always right next to Ronnie. Hey, really? Yeah, but you see, that's what. That's, it's like, sometimes it's the best thing that can happen to you to be right next to the champ. I mean, this is what happened with uh, Jay Cutler in the uh, 2001 Olympia, right? He was standing there right next to Ronnie and just standing there, he was beating him in, in a relaxed pose. Well, if I was as good as Jay, that would have been great, but uh, that, that didn't yeah. happen. But, uh, it's like, why do you got to put me next to this freaking guy? You know what I mean? Like, Jesus, give me a couple yeah. people in between. I, I don't know. You beat me, so you, you, you have to be good. Oh. <laughs> oh, you guys are back. You guys are back to a different topic. Just just to wrap up the old one, I yeah. wish it, it wouldn't get to this point where athletes have to pay their own way. But I do understand in the situation the way it is right now with all the, the numbers, there's almost no other way. Let me explain to people out there who, who are watching this why that is, because everybody asks the same thing all the time. They don't understand. I can give it to you really clean, guys, okay? They say, well, I don't understand. We were on ESPN back in the day. You know, we were on this. We were on, they were all over the place. TV revenue is all about ratings. Yes, we were. I, listen, I've got VHS tapes of myself on, you know, uh, uh, the USA coverage, national coverage, North American coverage, right back in the 80s and early 90s. Here's the problem. We don't have a big enough following. So they put it out there. The ratings come out. They're obviously not great. They're going to drop you. Okay? You're not selling time. You're not selling commercials when, when nobody's watching it. This is this answers the question. Well, I don't understand. How do they have the, the hot dog eating contest is on there? We're not. It's like, I'll tell you why. Because as stupid as it is, it's entertaining. And 10 billion people will watch it. What about the beanbag toss? They they got that damn thing the on. The cornhole, the axe throwing I saw. Yeah. The day, right? They got all these. The hell they tossing a beanbag? But you know what? It gets it gets ratings and review. And here's the thing. All you got to do is have whatever, 15 you know million people are watching. And guess what? Ford's interested in, in putting a commercial on there. And so is this insurance company. And so is this company. And so is this company. So that's why we're not, not on main network TV. We all know this because we're at shows. And guess what? There ain't a pro show that I've been to that sold out. It's very, very difficult to sell tickets for pros in any particular place. That's just the way it is. So without TV revenue, without pay-per-view revenue, that's why the, the prize money is not a million dollars. That's why well, I don't know, all these athletes should get that. That's ludicrous. You know, 10th place should be $200,000. Right, right, right. More, but where is it coming from? When we don't have mainstream appeal, that's the difficult part. Yeah, I get it. So, let me throw something else at you guys. Kamal Elgani going into the Open in Tampa this weekend. What do you guys think about that, man? I think, did you see what he looked like? Is he gone? I had him on my show the other day. He looks unbelievable. He does. I let know, me, he looks great. He looks unbelievable. And how, I'm, much is he, how much is he weighing? Do you I know? don't know, but I'll tell you this. He, I, he is, 
You can see right away that he's bigger. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's fighting for the win. He said he'll be about 216, I think, 217. He's not going crazy. He's no, smart. But he's so ripped. It look, he creates an illusion. It's ridiculous. Now, here's it's the crazy. interesting thing. Because I had him on my, my uh, Voice of Bodybuilding podcast this last week. My uh -huh. estimate. Even if he wins, he says he only really wants to do this because he's always wanted to do it. You know, and he realizes, you know, he's going to be 50 this year or so, 51. Yeah. Um, even if he wins, he's not going to entertain the Open. He's going back for that 212 title. Well, because well, like you, he competed against you and me, Bob, in 2003 in champions. Did he really? I didn't even. Yeah, he did. I had no uh, <laughs> Yeah, he, he was there. I promise you. And I didn't even know that. He reminded me when, when I saw him and we talked. I said, you don't remember me? I said, what wow. do you mean? This yeah, guy, he, he competed. This guy the, is so impressive at this age to look like he, I mean, it's impressive. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's impressive. so impressive. He has a chance of winning for sure. Yes. I wouldn't bet against him. Who is in? Who is who is in the show? Who's in the show? We got Akim. We got Quentin from uh, Canada. Quentin from Canada. He looks unbelievable too. Who, who else? Kuklo? Kuklo is yeah. doing Texas. Yeah, my my guy. Uh, doing, uh, Texas. Joe Mackey is doing. Crazy. Joe Mackey <laughs> is doing it. But Joe, yeah, but, but who's it. there? It's it's Akim. It's got to be the favorite, a top six yeah. Olympian. Akim's in. And then there's Kamal. Yeah. So so here comes. Typical question that we started before. But as Bob says, those guys are out muscle like they had no chance. So I said 212 has a very good chance against open. I mean, Akeem is a monster. How how much bigger can you be than Akeem? So perfect example. Extreme mass and he is 212 diamond sharp. You know, the, the yeah, everything but is there. Ake Akeem gotta be in shape because otherwise he's gonna lose. Yeah. Akeem's yeah. gotta be in shape from the back. Yeah. But so would Oh, uh, Olympia, Big Rami need to be in shape to beat 212 right. champion as well. Well, uh, big, big, yeah, Big Rami would have, would have to be in shape to win the Olympia. Yeah. I mean, uh, Big oh. Rami showing up next to Kamal and Kamal being super ripped and Kamal, I mean, Big Rami being well, off. He, I, I don't think, yeah, but Milos, I don't think that they have to match each other in condition. I think you got to be, if you're conditioned enough to win the Olympia, I think then your condition is good. Also, yeah. I heard that. And the, then when you put someone 210 pounds and somebody is 280 pounds or 290 pounds, yeah. I mean. <laughs> hey, but, but listen, ask Jim Mannion. Yeah, that's their middleweight standing next to the super heavyweight, right? Yeah. Hey, Jim Mannion saw Danny Padilla winning Olympia. That's, that's right. a, a prez. The only guy. <laughs> you know, he's the guy. So he yeah. saw Danny Padilla winning. How, how much? Was Danny? What did you say? Buck fifty, eighty. You know, so that's yeah, just keep, the perspective. Keep in mind, though. Now, even though, and you're right, Milos, Jim was the only one who had Danny Padilla winning the '81 Olympia. But keep in mind, now, the guys he's standing next to was Franco, Tom Platts. Um, who else was up around there? Uh, come on, Milos. Dickerson, okay. maybe. Who? Yeah, Dickerson. I mean, listen. Yeah. Even though Padilla was only maybe a buck seventy something or a buck eighty, those guys were only about two hundred. Hey, uh, Mohammed Maccabi beat uh, Lee Haney. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> another name. I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw another name out. Michael Crisso. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to ask Beatles in a second. I'm going to ask Bob. Is this is he qualified? And did did they, did they give him a pro card? No. No. Okay. So that's rumors. You win, you're in. You got to go win something. Got you. Oh yeah, I, I talked to Steve yesterday about him. Steve saw him, as you know, in a, in a, a gym. And he says, absolutely, possibly, one million percent, he is not qualified. They're not gonna, he's not going to get the Olympia invitation, guarantee. Okay. He so, has to actually earn his pro card. So, Minos, you saw him in person. What, tell me about this guy. I mean, listen, it's a, like a Photoshop in front of you. When he lifts his arms, you've never seen anything like it. Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, biceps. I mean, quality. I mean, Jay Cutler saw him as well. The quality that he has, he's obviously off the juice, off the diet, and this is how he walks around all the time. What, what does he have to work on? What does he need to work on? That's, that's back. From the, so from the I, rear. I told him, Foot, I mean, yeah. Flex Lewis and I talked to him and said, this is super, super impressive, but he needs wider back and more detail to be considered at the Olympia stage, you know, to be in a mix. He has to. I mean, this is... Uh, I, think he needs, I think he needs a better back and lats oh, from the back to even qualify for the Olympia. Yeah. Oh, well, 
he'll, he'll qualify easy. I mean, he's going to qualify easy. He needs the. Uh, uh, ab better abs, especially like lower abs, to make mm. you know that mid midsection connect everything. You know the arms, shoulders. Uh, I think he needs also a little bit fuller chest. Now that we are talking and analyzing, you see him. I think I sent you that video when he does most muscular. It's crazy it's because he's six two. He's fucking impressive. Know? He's impressive. Yeah, he he is oh. an impressive individual. Yeah. But could he so, win the closing round, Milos? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, if judged properly, like this guy said, if judged properly. But listen, I've seen uh, uh, Andrew Jack yesterday. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. Christ! I boy. mean, uh, so I was there with uh, Logan, and uh, because Steve came to the gym, I said, "Perfect, let's uh, let's uh, have Steve uh, see the Logan, right?" And then uh, Andrew was there, so we were, okay, Andrew, come here. Uh, Steve was impressed. I mean, you can ask him uh, everything. So. Comparable to Flex Wheeler, okay, you know, one of those physiques there. Whoa, Flex was more round and a little bit more aesthetic, but uh, there is the argument like, oh, here is a uh, new Flex Wheeler in, in, in the making. Now, Milos, you know, here's, my, here's my question, my friend. Does Michael Crizzo get penalized in a symmetry round because his head is too small? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that head is a muscle. You only judge a muscle, right? Uh, you know, I think so. It's I a muscle know. show. Head is not the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Andrew Jack, I saw that you, you saw him in, in, in person too, and, and, and he looks like a very impressive guy too. So he's doing, is he doing Tampa? No, just uh, Texas. Why, why wouldn't he do Tampa? Why wouldn't know, he do Why not? It's That's just two weeks back to back. I know, I know. Oh, I, I don't See, that, it, but, uh, this doesn't make any sense to me. Why not? If you think you win in Texas, then you got to think you win in Tampa too. Why not get that paycheck? Yeah, you know, complex. Also, also for the the Tampa, I heard the uh, the newly crowned Mister USA is doing the 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 Tampa Pro. See, you know, oh. I gotta be honest. Like, this is a great subject, Chris. Right? I think that's a huge, huge mistake, and I'll tell you why. Remember years ago when Matarazzo won the USA, and then Weeder gave him an invite to the Olympia. Yeah. Yeah. This guy went from being the best amateur in the world to last place in the Mister Olympia in a few months. I mean, go in and go. Be Mr. USA, right? Go out there and do your tour and get your, your props and your thing. You know, enjoy the thing. Why would you jump right into a pro show? I guess he just wanted to see where he stands, I guess. Is he, is he, is he that good? Uh, big Stu. I forgot his last name. It's Stu is his first name. And uh, he's, a, he's a big cat. Who I mean, is, that, is that the guy that trained with, uh, with, with, with Chris? No, I don't know who he trained with, but I just met him. Uh, he did, I, I didn't see any pictures, so I don't even know who it is. He's a, a, a Rottweiler for sure. He, he's hmm. thick. You yeah. talk about the kid who just won the USA? Yeah. The I mean, listen, God bless him. I just think, I don't know. To me, I wouldn't just jump into a pro show, you know, a week. Well, but if you're that good, if you if you, if he's that good, why not? I mean, the pro shows. Exactly. Look, look I, at I the love for him. pictures. Bob, if I would look back at the pro shows in the last three three pro shows, oh, oh, I would jump in it too. <laughs> You got a point, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you look yeah. at the lineup, I would jump in it too. You know? Yeah, yeah but Bob, as far as Mike Matarazzo. Look at look at look at Derek Lunsford. He won the USA. So he went straight pro Tampa Pro, won the Tampa Pro, placed fifth at the Olympia. Yeah, well, yeah. he's an exception too. Yeah, so maybe this guy too. I don't even know what he looks like, to be honest. Know. How far yeah, can I mean, I, Mike Matarazzo yeah, plays dead last, who cares? Uh look, ninety seven Olympia, right? There was only thirteen guys. Thirteen. So, Chris, you were eight, right? You two, were eight. Ron, two thousand nine, was nine, only thirteen, too. Thirteen, yeah. So uh, I was uh, ten. Where, where and that then eight? it was Cl uh, Claremont, Matarazzo, and uh, Francois. Well, you know, dead last. Well, that's uh, dead last of the best in the world. Right. You know, being the last Olympia, <laughs> it's not like a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Well, for most people, for complain? most people, for you most people, why yeah. Why for, <laughs> yeah, for most people, the, ma the major goal is to turn pro and make it to the Olympia. You know, it, there's no, no possible way that everybody's thinking I'm going to be Mr. Olympia. I mean, you know, some people, you know, sometimes you got to look in the mirror and be, and be realistic and say, listen, I'm glad I made it this far. Let's see how far yeah. I can take it. I never, I never thought I can win. Yeah. Um, but I, because I, I, I remember first time, my first Olympia was 2000. There was only 13 guys in the show. And I was doing photo shoots with Chris Lund. And, you know, I think, shit, I'm going to make top six. 
Yeah, right. Shit, what did I get? I got 11th out of 13. <laughs> right. Hey, hold on. Let <laughs> tell the story. That was the time that uh, I gave you the insulin backstage at uh, 12 o'clock noon. You looked like a fucking freak. They were taking your pictures, and those black and white pictures posted, right, in the uh, Master Fitness. You said yourself, everybody's eyes were on you because... You oh, yeah. Like, when I start pumping uh, up, shit was... Shit but, was yeah, the, the thing was... It was an hour, an hour delay. Yeah, so it was an hour delay, oh, you know, okay. because <laughs> at that time... Uh, okay, so you look fucking crazy here for a photo shoot. And then this is the first year, instead of everybody going uh, for the first round, it was individual, one by one. And you were number 13. Oh. You know, you were the, the dead last. And that was I don't even number. remember that. How do you remember my number? I remember everything. I was That's sitting next to... 40 minutes. <laughs> because, uh, you know, that was the time. Listen, uh, I'll tell you, because I'm sure people are going to be interested. Dennis looked goddamn crazy. Crazy, crazy. And then... He was like, okay, Miller's. Now, is this anything that we can do right now to make me look even better? Not true. So not true. Not true. Milo, stop. That's wrong. I tell you the truth. Listen, let me tell the story. Uh, okay. Here we go. Milos, no, Milos comes to my room and he looks at me. He's like, fuck, that's crazy. And then he said, let me call Milo, man. Let us see this. And then his ex wife comes into the room and she looks at me and she said, this is what she said. He could be a tad fuller. Oh. That was the decision. Done. Yeah, okay, no, no, okay. Uh, Dennis, yes, you did say that, but listen, it was not about. Yeah, I just wanted her to see, uh, of course, what you look like. I know, but I know. You were uh, man, because uh, I would not risk with. The, uh, I'll tell you, I would not risk with the insulin exactly. But you were saying I did insulin before the stage every time, pretty much. Okay, but when you were asking the same thing else, and you are a crazy fool on the shit, so I could only imagine. If you look like you did at 12 o'clock noon when they took a pictures of you. I mean, if this is how you step on the stage, you will be a shocker, a guarantee. So anyway, Dennis asked me, like, okay, Milos, uh, is this anything? I say yes, but if show is late, it could be a double-edged sword. So he goes, you competed at Olympia, you know, so many times. Was it ever late? And then I'm thinking, no, I remember always 12 noon, you know, you know. Five minutes, and then you were on the stage. Twelve no, it was zero. Uh, what's his name? Triple H ran on the stage that year and blabbed for fucking thirty minutes. <laughs> okay, and then this oh, so the I gotta blame him. I'm gonna blame yeah, Triple H. That, that was how <laughs> I remember everything. I was sitting next to uh, Kerry Case, and then you guys supposed to have like a ninety seconds for your free routine introduction, right? Here comes Kevin Lebroni, and I told Kerry, okay, let's time it. <laughs> Three minutes, 45 seconds for fucking uh, Kevin Lebroni, right? It's like, the more time went on, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, please, God. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, by the, by the time uh, Dennis came out, it was a uh, water buffalo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that did you know, uh, that was it. Uh, I'm glad you reminded me to the end of this podcast. I'm happy about this. <laughs> Bob, I'm, I'm, thank you, man, for coming on and taking all the questions we had for you. Because yeah, if you, you got know. anything more, uh, throw it out, bro. Last any uh, last request, guys? Black curtains, same uh, judges at every show. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> no, we we don't want to talk too much about all this. But black curtains would be great, though. Oh, uh, at least for pre. <laughs> I said I said it too. I mean, at least for prejudging something, you know, for something so so you can see. In all honesty, I mean, I get what Fuad was trying to say with that. Now, yes, there are logistical reasons why that can't happen. For what they can do, though, because I'm not a fan of the LED stuff. Yeah. Tone it down. Yeah. You know, listen, go to darker colors, even right. You know, make it right. Real stuff. You can you can turn an LED in black for for a couple yeah, of yeah, minutes. Listen, you can, again, make it a, a, a lower tone of whatever. You know, I just don't. You don't need a lot of this going yeah. on when you're, you know. And here's the other problem. When we're there in person, you can distinct every physique. You know, we're there in the first row, DJ, or whatever, right? It's when you're watching it on pay-per-view or on camera. It, that no, I, no, last year, last year, I think last year was terrible. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't. I think there was too much stuff going on. Too much. And I was sitting in the first row, but it was, I'm like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It was too much, too much. So yeah. black curtain is very possible, right? That's, uh, no, that's me, me, Milos. When they have when they have the the big screens, then there's, you can't put a curtain in front of it. So what you can do is you can maybe turn down the screen to a dark, dark background, so it you yeah. know you can see the athletes just for pre judging. Yeah. I'm not talking about finals. I'm talking about pre judging. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. Even but even the judges, please keep rotating the judges. 
Keep rotating them. Agreed. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> guys, I appreciate it, man. Thank you guys so much, Bob. Thank you. Why are you not in Tampa? Uh, because I am in Phoenix for the UBU uh, Expo there with uh, Ed and Betty Pariso. That's, show. that's also this weekend? That's this weekend, yeah. So oh, that's, uh, yeah. so that makes sense. So You're that makes sense. You're thinking my spot, aren't you? I gotta, that's, a, that's a heavy spot to fill. I'll, yeah, you be thinking I'll me in Tampa. Huh? <laughs> I'll see you in Tampa, DJ. You gonna be there? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's, it's a, it's, I, it's I, a lot of work, bro. Get some Red Bulls in you. Uh, I, I, I already know. And, and see, I don't even know if I can put on a shoe, man, to be honest, oh, right man. now. Do this is all I can wear. Bro, you're going to be like uh, like Fred Flintstone feet. You're going to be going over there. Is, is there that, any way it, to reduce that, an absence salt or anything like that? Bro, I've been, I've been, my foot is in an ice bath for, for five days, and the swelling is not good. The, sw time, the swelling yeah. didn't come until two days ago. Well, you got uh, Monday, two, you got uh, three days, bro. I'm afraid when I get on that plane. Oh, uh, shit. That's a, we're I, talking a four I, and a half. Time to take a Bumex. We're talking a four and a half. Yeah, we're talking a four and a half hour flight. He, Elos has got something for this, trust yeah. me. He's <laughs> nah. All right, guys, man, I appreciate y'all. Uh, um, Chris, I'll see you. Bob, I'll see you. Ladies at the Olympia. All right, guys. Thanks for coming on, Bob. You guys at the Texas Pro? I'll be there. No, 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 no. That's going to be no. a good show, man. That Texas Pro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll be there and then whatever else. Yeah, I'm dry out. All right. We'll catch up somewhere. Milos, I'll try are, to you going to, are you going to see UFC this weekend? <laughs> of course. Actually, Flex is coming. Yeah, Flex uh, Flex is uh, invited to come with me and and. Uh, oh okay, uh, I'm I'm weekend. glad I'm glad you're looking out for Flex too. Yeah, yeah, I never. Get <laughs> yeah, good hey, looking out. It's gonna be your turn. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm never invited. Bring me to when, bring me to the T-Mobile Arena. I want to go when. Uh, it's, when yeah. the... <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care, man. Bye. God bless you all. Yeah. Bye, bye bye. Bye. Later, everybody.